Hello, the following video is a recording from our Artist Feedback AMA featuring portrait photography. This session was held on March 31st in the Meta Jungle Discord, and our hosts this time are Mike Schmidt and Sabode Shetty. In this session, we feature 13 collections of portrait photography. This is a great opportunity to learn more about how to curate a successful NFT collection, and it's also a great time for collectors to find emerging artists in the NFT space. We hope you find this information helpful. Let's get started. I wanted to introduce everybody to a, a co-host that I have today, Sabod Shetty. Um, we're super fortunate to have him here today. He's definitely uh, someone in the space that that I really look up to. I've looked up to him for a long time now. I've seen him do uh, some amazing workshops. Uh, he's had some super success uh, recently with some sellout um, photo series and uh, wildlife, um, aerial photography, um, and you know, among others. And he's just been a really amazing community member. And so I'm gonna lean a lot on him because he's, a, he's just a world-class portrait photographer and published with National Geographic. He's done TED Talks. He's just, uh, we're, uh, we're really lucky to have him here today. I just wanna say that. So, uh, so uh, thanks for being here, brother. I really appreciate your time. I constantly see you in uh, spaces and um, I see you really working hard. So uh, thanks for being here. Thanks so much, Mike. Uh, it's such a great pleasure to hear those words from you because you know me from day one. And I came as a nervous wreck into this whole space, not knowing what to do and where to go. And even when I came to Meta Jungle, you know, I had my legs were shivering because I didn't know exactly where I was, what, how to deal with all these things. And today we are here. I mean, uh, Twitter, I mean, NFT as a whole is a really quick learning uh, experience. You learn every day, like as much as you learn in one month outside in the real life. So it's been a great journey and uh, good to be among all of you, uh, most of you, I know. So it's uh, it's like being with a bunch of friends and hanging around. Awesome, thank you. Awesome, Chris, appreciate it. And so I'll start by reading the description here. So what do the eyes tell us? Which secrets are hidden in the adepts of eyes? What untold stories do we read in the abyss of eyes? A while ago, I met some young boys in Manister, uh, the old name of a region in Izmit, Turkey where the gypsies densely live. During our chat, they told me that they are all members of a gang, a very dangerous gang that does very bad things, such as stealing apples from neighbors' gardens, breaking the windows and running away, uh, secretly smoking in secluded areas or fighting with children in other neighborhoods. Listening to these children was like reading the book, The Paul Street Boys uh, by Frank uh, Bonar. This collection is about my very dangerous gangsta fellows and the stories in their eyes. Very interesting. And these gangsters are uh, our children. <laughs> and so they're very interesting. Um, it's up close, um, gritty sort of black and white portraits here. And if, if you see, um, there's four of them that I've favorited. And the ones that I favorited kind of feel like these really raw mug shots. I, I was drawn to the ones that felt that way. And they were all single portraits. And so we'll look through some of them. This one here, I think was the strongest standout image to me. Now, this is a young kid and the face on him, he, he looks like he's really gonna grow up and be a real, a real gangster if he's not already. It's, it's, very, it's very strong. Um, this, is, this is a moment that the photographers captured that I really feel um, is a, is a powerful image, and it, I love I love the kid behind him with the boots hanging down, and you see this kid's boots, and it's it's got you know these these rips, and they it look like they have this eight this age to them, and they, you know you have the, the textured walls back here. You can tell these kids are are from the streets, and you know they they've got some they got some miles on their shoes, and they're doing some they're doing some things. So I I do I love that one man. Take a look at a couple of the other ones that. Um, stood out to me. And the stories behind these are really great as well. So this one, this one's interesting. This kid has nails going through his, uh, his hands here and hopefully new, new nails and not rusty ones, but he looks uh, pretty mean. Uh, so this is uh, Batuan, uh, 
uh, Batu, uh, well, Batu Han, if I, if I say he's incorrect, then you guys uh, know how to say it. Just let me know. He's the leader of the gang. So he is called Chief. He's going to school. He works near a fisherman on weekends. He doesn't want to go to school after the eighth class. I don't know if the eighth class means like the eighth grade in the United States or, or he, he has more than, more than eight classes in a day. That's a lot. He is saving money to buy a suit since his brother will marry soon. Really interesting descriptions. Like it, it doesn't, it doesn't give you too much. It gives you like these little <laughs> sentences that kind of make you think a little bit about this kid's life. And so, um, let's go through two others that um, this one uh, was collected. This is kind of a scary portrait of a kid. I, man, I like it, and I, I, I really, I enjoy how the uh, the photographer used these backgrounds and also created depth with these shadows and this light and all these shapes happening. And it truly looks mean. Um, it's, Kam it's Kamal, um, also fishbone because of his skinny body. Uh, on the other hand, he's maybe the bravest and jeopardous member of the gang. He's always seen on the front line in the business of uh, stealing apples from neighbors' gardens. Uh, additionally, breaking windows of houses with stones is especially his profession. Kamal has, uh, has a secret that nobody knows. Trish, keep it a secret. He's in love with a girl whose name is Medin in his classroom. So you want to talk uh, a bit about some of these, uh, Sabot? I'd love to hear um, what you think about uh, some of these portraits. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. I made some points about this collection. First of all, I love the collection. Uh, truly, it's incredible the way he has presented this gangster kids uh, but mike if you could scroll up to the top uh, to the top of the page of this yeah i mean uh, first of all i saw that uh, the presentation overall the banner and the profile picture which has put all look great but uh, twitter link is missing you know like he's taken care of everything but there's no twitter link which could be, could have been there because sometimes i think collectors would want to see exactly who the person is uh, in twitter isn't that a valid point uh, mike it's definitely a valid point and I actually had to jump to the chat room, if you didn't notice, to, to just grab the name. And so if the Twitter link was here, that's good. And, you know, also sometimes, um, you know, I might be looking at a, a body of work and think to myself, well, I want to see their other work. And so if there's a Twitter link, I could just click that link and kind of go right into, you know, maybe a link tree or something like that and, and pull up some of their other work. So I do think that's a valid point for sure. And so anything else you had on the collection that, uh, or do you have the uh, questions pulled up? Did I, um, did I drop off here? No, you're good. I can hear you. Oh, okay. Um, Is about still there? Maybe uh, uh, is Sabod having a technical issue? Not, I mean, I could just go on. That's fine. <clears throat> Goon, do you have the um, the uh, spreadsheet pulled up? I just don't want to be pulling up the spreadsheet while I'm sharing the screen and, and stuff here. Yeah, let and me maybe, pull it um, up. Just give me one second. Yeah, so maybe we can grab some of the questions. The future, you know, I'll, just, uh, I'll make a print out of it. <clears throat> Okay, I got it pulled up. Great. And if you're having issues, Sabod, maybe exit the chat and then come back in. Cool. So, what was the uh, what was the actual questions that the uh, the artist had for the collection? Do you guys have the spreadsheet sorted in a certain way? Uh. If well, if you scroll on the spreadsheet to the right side, you'll see portrait, the portrait sections there, um, and then you can. It's I think it's one of the ones towards the top. It's uh, Marat and the, um, the collection eyes of uh, Manister.
a lot of sub- yeah there's a lot of submissions so uh, yeah i, I can hear it. you now yeah i got i don't know my desktop uh, discord kind of got ruggy so i had to move from there to my iphone now so oh, can okay start? cool yeah cool so i was basically yeah yeah so if if you wanted to talk more about the collection um then yeah absolutely Definitely, yeah. I was uh, initially talking about the banner, which is uh, done so well in this case. I think it's kind of a lesson that we all could learn as to how to catch the attention with a nice banner because he's put uh, those two eyes which you cannot uh, unsee once you see it. You know, it's such a beautiful way of presentation. So that's one thing I wanted to mention. And I love the humorous descriptions as uh, Mike has read already a few of the description about a girlfriend or the, one of the kid wants to buy a suit so that he can attend a marriage of his brother. So the descriptions also show that the photographer was highly connected with these uh, kids. He talked to them a lot to understand a little bit more about them. So these are all not like you walk in and you take a shot and you get out. These are the shots where he has interacted with these kids a lot, you know, however dangerous they may be, which I don't. When he says dangerous, I read the description, they steal apples, they break some windows, and um, that's exactly what he did as a kid. So I was kind of, uh, I felt good that I was I was a dangerous kid. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we didn't so have any one... apples. We didn't have any apples <laughs> to, to steal in Brooklyn, but we, we, you know, we did the window breaking thing and ringing doorbells and running away and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, because they... when he... When we presented this in our space, uh, I thought really these guys were like gangster kids with all the drugs and etc. But when I read us, I, I felt like they're really cute. So that's another thing. But anyway, it shows that he has a good interaction with these kids. And that's the reason he's able to bring out these wonderful uh, stories behind uh, each one of the images. And also, I like the overall, uh, you know, constant uh, toning, you know, like there's no image which like stands out from the next because they're all equally uh edited you know like when you say the tonality it's all equal to all the pictures they look like one big family of images which is again fantastic and his use of flash is great it doesn't use that uh, rough uh, feeling because he's trying to say they are gangsters so in that case you need a rough light not a very soft light not a very feminine light we like we try to use in normal portraits so that's again a good mm-hmm. intention of what he has put in uh, with the flash because it creates that intense look and also one more thing I observed was he always uh, makes sure that some extra element of interest is in each and every image. You know, there's always that secondary element, whether it's a bar, like in this picture, he has something in the foreground where it obstructs the view. In other images, he has used some other elements. So it's always like an X factor in each and every image. There's an extra layer of information, which is really, again, shows his, uh, you know, the way he thinks, which is uh, fantastic. And I also went through his Twitter, and he's, uh, I know him for a while. So he's a great uh, community member. He engages with everyone. He shares everyone's work. So overall, I think he's doing uh, fantastic with uh, everything else, uh, apart from not having a Twitter link in OpenSea. That's, a, that's the only thing I could find in this. Other than that, I love his work. So what, what, uh, if you have the spreadsheet pulled up, what was the questions that he actually asked about the collection? Oh, give me one second, Mike. Uh, since my laptop crashed, I had to sh- shut down everything. Okay. I'll open it in a... I have, I'll it. Open it, I have it if you need it. Sure, sure. Okay, so you... the first question is, what are your thoughts about the story, presentation, and pricing of the collection? And the second question is, how many photos should a collection consist of? Okay, uh, so the first question, uh, I think the story is really, really interesting. Um, what, 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 show me the sec- a second piece of the first question. It was the story uh, presentation. I think the presentation is really good as well. Um, pricing, right? And yes. The pricing, yeah, zero point one. It's, it's it's really fair. It's like a, it's like at the fairest level. Like I mean, I think it's I think the pricing is uh, is is very fair. Um, you know, you could even, it could even be between you know zero point one and zero point two when there's like this many pictures. You know. 0.1 a lot of people use when there's like a huge collection but yeah it's definitely um you know, a price that a lot of collectors are going to see and, and want to pick up for uh for that price so and th- that second question uh was what how many photos collection size collection consist of um i mean there's no i mean there's no real you know black and white answer to how many you know collection you could should consist of i think you know if you if 
the way I like to look at it is if you have enough images uh, to where you could click on an image and it's 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 strong on its own and also strong in the collection, uh, then however many you have like that is good enough for me. If you're trying to get to the point where like you're trying to meet a number and you're just throwing in extra photos that aren't uh, aren't as strong as the others just to meet a number, then it, I think that that's, you know, not the best idea. And then, you know, then there's, you know, there's other collections like that are like obsessive collections, like, you know, Justin uh, Eversano Twin Flames and, um, you know, Will Nichols 100 Palm Trees, where, you know, the, the number, uh, you know, the number means a lot to people. And it sort of makes it this, this uh, interesting sort of collectible uh, a series where everybody wants to kind of have one of those uh, in there so I think that's kind of a long drawn out answer but I don't, I don't think there's any hard rule on it I, I'd say just um, I, I like to put as many as I, I have that are strong enough uh, for me that I, that I think um, all could fit the same pricing because they all have sort of uh, this equal uh, strength if you, if you have anything else to add to that uh, Sabon yeah I mean even I am uh... A believer that if your collection is around maximum of a dozen, I think it's a good way to handle it because uh, too many pictures, according to me, kind of uh, becomes excess, you know, when you're trying to show it across in Twitter spaces or when you're trying to show it as a poster. If you have more than 12 images, then all the images become so small that you won't have attention to anything because presentation, what I've learned is presentation is very, very important in Twitter and uh, more images you have, more, you know, uh, less uh, attention the images get. So I think a collection of 12 makes it very comfortable, not only to have it as a sold out collection more sooner, at the same time to present it all across the platforms. It's my opinion with the collections. And so, you know, uh, looking at the series now and seeing like a lot of these up close portraits, I think it would be interesting to also see like some candid moments like between these kids interacting. Like I, I'd love to see them interacting with each other and what that like looks like outside of them, you know, almost like being a fly on the wall instead of them, you know, let, like them getting used to you with the camera and being around you to the point where, you know, it's not all about them taking pictures of, of themselves, but maybe like you getting some shots of like them interacting and, and you know, talking about what you're going to do next or something. I think that'd, that'd be pretty cool. And, um, you know, it, it'd probably lead more into like the document. Well, this is documentary portraiture, but um, have, have have more of an aspect of that uh, that candid style, which would be really cool. So. But uh, given the title is Eyes of, uh, there is an eye in the title. So I think that's why mm. he went with the very strong eye contact with each and every image. But yeah, that would be a nice follow-up if this one works out well. Yeah, sure. I mean, it doesn't have to even be in the same series, but would yeah, would, just to just see more of like the behind the scenes stuff that goes on with these kids would be it would be really cool. I'm, I'm not saying to uh, follow them into to doing crimes, but um, <laughs> yeah, but just hanging out with them. But I, if if we don't have anything else, then I I think we covered this one pretty well, and uh, we could probably move on to the next collection. Sure. sure. Cool. Uh, so the next collection we have is uh, the uh, Bandari uh, women. And this one is uh, minted here on Sloika, which makes it a lot easier for us to uh, go through the images. So I'll read a bit about it here. So about when I uh, first started researching the lives under the mask and had some knowledge, I thought that I should definitely go to Iran to photograph these women. I've always been interested in the cultures that women have practiced and what they've added to their lives. And I decided to do all of my research to go to the Iranian, Iranian uh, Kweshim Island. Uh, of course, I must say that the trip was quite tiring. Uh, in many other parts of the world, we come across the stories of women who have to experience hard ones throughout their lives under the influence of cultures. These women on the island of uh, Kush uh, Kushab, uh, Kushim are one on one of them. Uh, different geographies, different cultures, and different lives have one common point, and that is only women. Okay. And so we'll look through the series. <clears throat> and so a lot of the women here are masks. And so I asked uh, Sabot when we were looking at this, I said, you know, wh what's with the mask? Why the mask? And he told me that it's like for protection against, um, I guess, men. Um, 
you know, being able to see their full, uh, their full face. And so we thought this one, this, uh, this starting image was, uh, was very strong here. We talked about, um, the colors of the hand gesture on the, on the, on the, uh, on the chin, the eyes are very, very telling and the composition that sort of has these, uh, these, these lines that lead right into the center and the color, the color, uh, relationships, everything can happen, uh, turned out real beautiful in, uh, in, in this image here. <clears throat> Um, this one here, um, it's great. Uh, we, we talk about great expression, beautiful shot, and just um, Spo, do you want Spo, do you want to talk a little bit about? Um, I, I, as I know, I look at a lot of your portraits, and they're they're really clean. And we did talk a bit about this, you know, this this tree here with and and the power line kind of coming through, and um, yes. what it's like when you uh, when you're more taking portraits of someone, and kind of uh, talk to us about what what it means to also outside of just uh, looking at the emotion on the person how important it is to also kind of pay attention to that background yeah definitely mike uh, for me when i make a portrait of course my portrait subject is my hero but at the same time i also consider background equally my uh, hero uh, subject as well because without a background portrait can easily fall apart and that's something i thoroughly uh, take care when I take a portrait because it's about them and not the background. Even if the background is there, it should be well controlled so that it doesn't become a interference. Rather, it contributes to the image. And uh, yeah, I mean, sometimes I, I host workshops and I observe my own uh, people who come with me on my photography trips as to how they deal with portraits. Sometimes they are either nervous or they're in a hurry or they're shy to approach the person so they will immediately stop a person can i take a portrait and they just take a portrait right there and then uh, that's usually when background goes wrong you know when you have a opportunity you find a nice subject it's better to talk to them just say something whatever it takes to break the ice make them comfortable and then move them just look around you there will be a better way to compose the image just by moving them few steps you can get better background and once your background is controlled, your portrait automatically stands out. And that's one thing I've been observing in this collection. Not all images are like that. Of course, there are great images. But this particular image, if you talk about it, uh, yeah, for me, background is kind of interference because it, uh, the line, whatever that is running through the uh, through the pole, is running through her head. You know, sometimes it can be a bit of a, you know, what it says is when we see the first image, it's a very, very strong portrait. We can tell that the photographer knows exactly what she's doing. The hand gesture is perfect. The eye contact is perfect. The way that she has broken the frame into two uh, colors uh, is a, a, a very accurately done. There are flowers on the uh, background which uh, mimics the you know, cloth that the lady is wearing. Everything about this image looks perfect. And when you see the next one, it doesn't feel like the same photographer. That's what I meant to say. Because the control on the situation here is very weak. Uh, more or less, it's like you stop the person, can I take a portrait? And you take a portrait. And you don't think beyond that. So that's what I felt when I saw this image. You know, what's interesting is that um, I, I started to get better at portraits, especially in environmental ones, when I started playing around in other genres of photography. When I started playing around with landscape and just photographing landscape by itself. And then when I went back to portraits, it's interesting because I was considering a lot more of the background than I was of, uh, of just the, um, the, just my subject. Because before that, for some reason I had, it was like all of my attention was on the subject. And it was like, as long as they were making good, good uh, expression, to me, it was a good shot. And I wasn't considering all the elements, and it can take it from a good shot to a really great shot if all those elements are actually considered. And especially, you know, if you want to do like a case study, you can go to any of uh, Stu Mackery's image because he's a uh, master at environmental portraits, not just portraits, but environmental portraits. You can always see his environmental portrait, analyze like what is in the background, and you'll see how consciously he makes sure that background is contributing 100%, not even 80 or 90%, 100%. Yeah, I think who, that's something. Who is, the, who is the photographer that you mentioned? Steve McCurry, Steve McCurry. Oh yeah, Steve McCurry, yeah. Yeah. yeah, of course, le legendary uh, photographer. Na Nat National Geographic, a uh, famous image of the Afghan girl. <laughs> right. Yeah, a exactly. Of, a lot of beautiful work. Um, yeah, for instance, so if, I, if I talk about this image, if Steve McCurry was here taking this particular image, he would make sure, because portrait is a controlled art, it's not a street photography, 
where everything is candid and random moments but street photo i mean portrait photography is a very controlled art you are controlling the whole situation and when you're doing that you can always walk around talk to them there's a seat in the background you know there's like a sofa the person the photographer could have asked some kids from the house to jump into that sofa have some interaction or put a man there like a bossy guy and against this woman you know it would like add up some stories and layers of information which may make the viewers stay with the image for few more seconds or few more minutes yeah Yeah, I know you also talked about too that you know since there was nothing going on in, in this portion of the frame that it it might have been like a better vertical. Yes, right. it could have easily been in a vertical. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so we both, you know, it, we, we we both took we both took a look at the series, and you know, we studied some of the work last night together, and so when we both got to this image, we we kind of felt the same way, and that was that, you know. Um, it just wasn't nearly as strong as the other uh, images uh, within the collection, and you know the the um, the expression you know doesn't quite feel there. It feels maybe like almost the um, you know it's it's you know sometimes like it's this moment between moments in a portrait where uh, you have to find that between moment where it's something you feel it in the gut and you can really pull something out of it. And it doesn't it doesn't feel like maybe there was enough time spent. Um, with this uh, with this subject, and also we can we considered you know the background here to be a, a bit distracting, and you know uh, Sabod said had you know the photographer pulled the subject maybe you know a few feet maybe five feet or so uh, from the background, then we uh, we would have had a, a beautiful bouquet um, of, of blurred background and could have had much more attention on the uh, on the actual subject. Right, and also one more thing is uh, from my personal experience. Whenever you make a image of a lady or a feminine image like this, uh, it's better to have a soft light. You know, sunlight directly hitting their face usually doesn't look very appealing because it it looks good on men because they we have that features. You know, very sharp and very rough. But when it's uh, feminine, it's always good to have that shadow light. You know, which is bouncing off a wall or whatever it is. It's more better with the indirect source of light rather than a direct source of sun. and that's one thing and yes uh, here she had the opportunity because she is wearing very warm colors and the background is opposite you know it's complementary color which is the opposite which is green in this case so as mike said two three steps forward and a bit of a zoom lens like a 7200 and you would have a creamy bokeh which is green and right away there's no distraction it rather becomes an addition for your image yeah these are the few things which could have been controlled and for me yes in this collection this image feels a little bit uh more random than most of the others mm -hmm. and so you know we, we both we both really uh really really enjoyed the shot um i i, I specifically talked about it i love the i love the hand placement uh of both of the hands and i, I love the mask and the eyes seemed very striking and sabode pointed out that you know the mask actually replicates the uh the geometry and squares uh of our background here so in this instance it it doesn't feel like the same photographer right so it's like um this shot here doesn't seem to quite have the impact and elements as 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 this one true but i also like the way mike is uh, jumping the instance loika it's quite cool we are talking about it yesterday at in open sea you have to go to back and check image here you can at least swipe through one and uh, the next and also the black uh, night mode is quite cool yeah this is this is um this is so much easier to do in AMA on Stoica than it is with OpenSea and that's that's how you know that we're early because OpenSea hasn't even implemented something so um that I would think would be so simple uh into the uh into their um their platform uh, being able to move through images like this Another beautiful one, right? Um, great, great composition. Uh, great color relationships. Great posture. It just feels. It, it feels like all the elements just you know come together in this one, right? Yeah, I mean, if if I was in that scene, I, I'm first of all, I love this image. It's just perfect in every sense. But if it was me, like. Uh, the previous photographer was trying to add an extra element of interest uh, maybe 
I'm just saying maybe because I was not there. I don't know. But maybe if there's a cat around, you just pick the cat and put it in the window. It adds another extra element of interest. You know, anything of that sort uh, in the window because window is kind of empty, but still it's fine. It looks great. Uh, but that could be an opportunity for an extra X element. Yeah, that's a that's very well seen and, and a smart thought process to add those extra layers and and add, just add an extra dimension and story to the image because then you'd have sort of this like line coming down from the lantern to your subject to your next subject and it would just yeah. really bring your eye around the frame. Don't think it's a fantastic shot. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, yeah, we both really really love this shot. Um, obviously. Uh, the lighting is really taken into account in this one. Uh, beautiful lights coming in from the left. Uh, the hands, gorgeous, the uh, looking down. And so in, in this image, we actually have um, them working on something, which is different to see from some of the other ones. And, you know, Sabo talked about the carpet, beautiful, um, you know, uh, textures and patterns in the carpet. And it's interesting how they, they sort of flow right into the, uh, uh, their own uh, garments and attire. It's a, uh, it's a beautifully rounded image. Yeah, when I meant to say feminine light, this is what I meant. The soft light, which is not direct sunlight. It just sips in through bouncing or whatever. It becomes soft and then it hits the subject. I mean, this image is so perfect. Uh, when you go back to the other image, the green uh, background, it doesn't even look like the same photographer. That's what I was trying to say. I mean, when you look at this image and come back to that, it looks like totally different photographers. Uh, sometimes that's where the curation parts come. You know, like you have to be really, really uh, hard on yourself when you're especially putting it on uh, some places like NFT, where it even takes money to remove images. You know, like it's not... Uh, and also it's about impression. You know, like when you show a consistent impression throughout, it creates that strong, uh, you know, uh, impression in the collector's mind. Absolutely. And um, you actually mentioned uh, yesterday that, uh, you know, we should do some type of uh, workshop at Meadow Jungle where um, people before they're about to mint their series can kind of like run it by us. And um, yes. we can take a look and pull the images that, you know, help them pull the images that are not as strong or maybe not as uh, able to tell the, um, you know, tell the story. Because it's it's a difficult thing as photographers, we're we're kind of attached to uh, almost all the images that we take, and so sometimes it needs um, a second or a third eye um, to help with the curation. You know, I don't always know when when my my images are are, are good or great. It's it's a very it's a tough learning experience. So. But through these AMAs, I'm <laughs> getting I'm getting better yeah. by by just you know viewing the work of others and you know, and, and just learning from what they're doing and learning from my co-hosts and what they're saying and stuff. And really considering when I, when I go to drop my next, you know, um, documentary series. So, uh, this image here, we we'll took a look at this here and, you know, it felt, you know, a little bit busy. Um, I mentioned that the, the tree here, a bit of a distraction, uh, for me coming out of the, you know, the, the, the body here. And this is an, you know, another example of like, uh, really recognizing your your background here. Maybe if maybe if she had stepped uh, a couple steps to the left, and the tree could have just been an extra element within the frame that was um, was was beautiful instead of being merged uh, in into her like this. And so you said, Sabod, that you know in a situation like this, you'd probably have just moved around a bit and possibly went in indoors or um, into sh into a more shaded area or just to try to take the shot from a different different uh, perspective, correct? Yeah, I mean, even not every time you have that uh, comfort, maybe this is a place where there's nothing, uh, there's no buildings at all. Maybe it's middle of nowhere. In that case, at least a zoom lens, like a 70-200 at 2.8 or something like a 50mm 1.8, at least those things can really make the background go invisible. You know, they just turn, turn them into bokeh and it works uh, because there's no distractions anymore. So I think uh, sometimes just that zooming in can create a compression which can uh, remove the background distractions. I know. So this image is good. She's try trying to tell a story about the person and the hardships and etc. But that background is taking a lot of attention. Like Mike said, the tree is right away coming into her arm, which is kind of uh, distracting in my opinion. 
before. And so by no means are we saying that it's a bad photograph because it's not. It's it's actually a good photograph. We're just trying to be a little critical in, in a way where you can consider other things and not stop at, you know, the good photograph, but make your way to the great photograph by considering those elements. The next shot, we both had, you know, the same uh, initial reaction from this one. It just, it just didn't feel like it, one, it doesn't really feel like it fits the mood of the collection and it just, the composition didn't feel right. The posture, uh, the open mouth, the, uh, the expression is just not the one that's, um, that feels that it fits the mood of this collection uh, at all. So, um, and then we yeah, moved on. I mean, yeah, in the previous image, if I could add, uh, for instance, when we take a picture of our own, you know, like if our friends take our pictures, how many times do we say, take another picture, take another picture? Because we are so uh, concerned about how we look in the image, even if our eyes are not properly opened, our mouth is not properly placed, we take all those things into consideration. I think that is uh, required when you look at your own portraits. You know, you need to make sure that you're presenting them in the most, uh, you know, like dignified way. And here she was... It looks like she was talking or something of that kind. And in between that, the shot happened. Maybe uh, the next picture or the next picture could have been the one which could have been much better than this moment, which is captured, in my opinion. Again, we're not trying to say any picture is good or bad. We're just trying to be uh, just doing the giving feedbacks. That's all it is. So, yeah. yeah. And another, another thing is the angle of view. You know, when you take, uh, you know, people who are sitting, if you if you are standing and taking a picture, you tend to look down on them. And that's exactly the angle here because you're looking down on the subject. It may look sometimes good, especially in kids. I do try that angle where I look down at them so that their eyes become more, uh, you know, like bigger and they pop up. But in this case, it makes the woman look a bit weaker, you know, because you are standing on a higher ground than her. Yeah. Always being in the eye level also makes a difference in most of the pictures, especially of women when you take off their uh when you happen to make their images perfect i love that addition. thank you and so you know we move on to the, the final image here which you know could also be the the hero image of, of this series like we thought this is just beautiful you done uh fantastic you know you you have a wall here that creates dimension that kind of leads into uh it's a beautiful figure that seems quite mis mysterious coming through the doorway and just behind her we have this the, the line of the sea and then you have a it leads up into a lighter blue of the sky which kind of mimics the blue that's off of here these buckets everything seems like it's very well thought out from a a, a photographer who's uh, really considering uh, the elements of, of the photograph how about you Sabon? Definitely, definitely. This is the hero. You know, if I had to make a poster work for YouTube uh, to introduce uh, these people and show the video of theirs, this would be the picture where I would add the title on the uh, left hand side and all that. You know, it's that kind of image which really welcomes you into that story that you're going to tell. So this is definitely the hero. If she had to make a book, let's say tomorrow of these people, this would be the cover of the book. You know, it's that kind of an image which really welcomes you into the whole collection. So definitely love it but one thing i want to add is uh, the crop factor me and mike discussed this uh, there are two kinds of crop factors happening in this collection one is this as you see which is more of a not 16 to 9 but a little bit uh, different than that but here is the original uh, crop ratio as the camera takes you know so i uh, checked the numbers it's exactly 50 50 half of them are in this crop ratio half are in crop ratio so that's another thing which could have been maybe consistent mm -hmm. So something I want to mention is um, when putting together a series, um, it's a really good idea to start strong. And I think the photographer here started strong and it's a really good idea to end strong. Okay. And so I think they ended really strong as well. And so um, I think they did a really good job with that. What are the questions that this photographer had? Okay. Um, and it's Oslem, by the way. Oslem the is the photographer. Sorry, I should have been saying the name. <clears throat> is the number of photos appropriate, and is it um, an affordable price? Okay, so let's. 
jump back out oh, see the price here uh, 0 0.2 eth yeah that's definitely a good price i see a lot of price on Solika at 0 0.25 it's definitely fair i'm guessing they're all 0 0.2 yep they're all 0 0.2 uh, the other question was about um is the amount of images enough uh yeah i think 10 is a, is a good amount of images but to, my, to be honest if if if, if you know I, i'd personally if had would have not probably added this one um uh or this one and maybe had it at eight had it at eight and had a had a stronger series um but you know it's minted on Sloika, so i don't think that that can be done and that's fine um and so you just take that into consideration for um for the for your next series but uh, we really love the series though it, it is it's definitely beautiful work yeah, unique work. I mean, not something that you see every day. So definitely your potential is great, but there are a couple of images which could have not been avoided, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Cool. Was that all the questions? So yeah, we'll those are the two on. questions. Cool. And so then we'll move on to um, uh, to portraits by uh, Athos. And so um, title portraits. Um, Probably could, probably in best interest, in my opinion, come up with a, a, a title that's, you know, could be more compelling to the actual uh, story that you're trying to convey since it's a collection. Unless uh, you're deciding, I guess, for it to be um, not a collection, but a um, just a, a, a collection of one of ones that don't kind of speak to a, a particular subject. So. First ones we opened were obviously the, the first ones here, which uh, me and Spol were really drawn to it. Uh, they're definitely really surreal uh, looking, which we've loved. Uh, these shots, this one's really, really cool. Very different work, really poetic. Really makes you think about, you know, what you're looking at. Fine, I'd, I'd call it fine art, actually. Uh, fine art portraiture. Um, and then, you know, we. We moved on and we looked at you know a couple of other images and so like then this shot and you know we were both in agreement that you know it, it's it's a good shot but it it's just it's it's not as as great as the others and it, it also doesn't feel like it fits into the same category and we felt the same way about um this one here where um it just it didn't feel like as experimental as the uh, as the other as the other shots that were more experimental within um, within the series, like um, the first two and um, this shot here, which is a really interesting shot that looks like it's like um, you know done with maybe a, a, a projector, like a, a light projector, and it's projecting all of these uh, letters and symbols on her. And it's got a really striking look, and it's a lot more experimental than you know uh, these these two images that might work in a, a different series right and we have another experimental shot right so this chained one which you know is, a, is another really really uh, beautiful and soft shot uh, probably should say not suitable for work but, you know and um you want to you want to pick up actually here, Sabor, and talk a little bit since you know we, we both talked about the same sort of uh, points here and we hit on some of these like like another gorgeous you know shot like lots of triangles happening here triangle with the arms triangle with the hair a triangle with the shoulder and elbow and all this and her her look and jawline and all this a really beautiful look but just doesn't feel right in the same series as something like this like and yeah, sure, I mean, yeah go ahead please yeah. the usp of this whole collection was as mike said uh experiments you know like there are some experiments in each image there's something conceptual about each image there's something special x factor in each image and that's what is happening in the first image second image the fourth image they're all very experimental even the uh, sixth image and even the last one yeah all of them have a single theme though the last one is color but it's such a brilliant image it could have been standalone 
uh, on its own at one Ethereum, and I think it would still sell in you know, that kind of a shot because everything is right about it. But the other images, especially the third image, uh, feels like it's like a break that the model took in between the shoot. You know, it almost feels like that, like a, like a picture which just doesn't fit into this uh, this particular uh, uh, collection. You know, if uh, there was a kind of a relaxed BTS kind of a shoot, which many photo fashion photographers do where they show a model doing the day-to-day -day stuff, that's where the third image would belong in a bigger collection maybe. But here, I don't think it's really belonging to this place. And the same with the fifth image. You know, it's a very straightforward uh, image where the girl is just looking into the camera. There's no experimentation as such, uh, which is what was the theme of this whole collection, is what I feel. And the last yeah, image is definitely the best of the lot, but it, it it's color. It could have been sitting alone on its own in foundation and selling at a crazy high price because it's a brilliant image. Yeah, and so we we talked about you know the, the collection probably should be a collection of four, and maybe that collection is this image, uh, this this image, this image. <clears throat> yeah, right? and then um, and then this one, and you know, and then. I think that would make sense as a collection, right? We talked about that, but you know, that's not to say that like some of these other ones are not absolutely beautiful photographs and should be in in in, in another collection. It just they still it just doesn't all fit. The technical skill of this photographer, like right off the bat when you see them, I, I kind of said, just said like when I opened this up, I said, "Oh wow!" Like you know, I, yeah. I already want. I already wanted to talk about it because I'm like, okay, you know, I'm I'm compelled by a lot that I see. Uh, immediately, and so, um, what uh, particular questions that the um, that Athos had? Uh, the first question is: Is the number of photos in the collection enough, or are they too many? Second one is: Are the images coherent, or should I burn some? And the third one is: uh, Do you think the pricing is fair? Yeah, I, I mean, I think we touched on a lot of that, right? And so. Um, do we think it's coherent or cohesive? Um, not exactly, right? And so we, we, I think we've answered that already. Um, and so, you know, should you have to burn any, which, you know, which it's, it's, it kind of sucks to tell people to burn, but I mean, if, uh, if you want it to feel like a cohesive story, then I think you have to burn uh, some of these, and unless there's an option or foundation comes out with a future option where you can take this and transfer it to another collection, but I don't think you can because I think it's, you know, bulletproof minted onto the blockchain already and it's meant to be part of this one. And this is why we should have this uh, workshop where people that are interested in minting can up maybe apply because there's probably tons of people about to mint and uh, we can help them uh, curate uh, before they mint. And it could be multiple eyes on their uh, their minting, especially when you're going on to um, something like a Foundation or Sloika, where um, you put it on there and it's on there, and and that's sort of sort of it. And I, I don't know about Sloika, but I know with Foundation you can burn it, um, and then it's and you know, it costs you money, and so you're using more money. Um, so yeah, the 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 layout. Uh, beforehand is is very important. So and uh, the, and oh. the question was about pricing. Is it fair or is it uh, too much? Is the question. Um, I I think it's I think it's uh, I think it's fair, especially for foundation. Right, I think they take a little bit more fees generally. So I think they maybe they lowered their fees a bit recently. Yeah. I, I, I think I think stuff generally sells for a little bit higher on foundation than it does on you usually see on open C. So yeah, I don't see anything really wrong with that. I mean, if people really if, if collectors want it, they're gonna buy it. True, true. That's what Mike and me said, you know, when we saw this collection, there's no need to review the images as such because they're all great images. The only issue was the uh, collection coming together as one. For sure. And so I think I good on that one, man. I think we hit there. <clears throat> Give them enough good, great advice for that. Yeah. So, uh, 
next collection uh portraits from the streets and the artist has their uh twitter linked here uh, my, my twitter tales and uh, i'm gonna read this let's see uh, streets are not just by lanes and uh quad quadrangles I haven't heard of that a street is uh life in itself uh, rattling so many stories uh that it's almost deafening uh, not everyone hears those uh, not everyone has got an eye for it as well but those who do those who does or should do be should be do uh never could get over that uh in silences and in bustles and alleys to skyscrapers streets are uh munificently bearing themselves uh, out for people like us to unfold their mystery. Uh, the more you excavate, the finer it gets. And amateur exploration, uh, trying to capture some of the mysteries. I would, I would never, I would never say, I would never call um, your explorations amateur, or refer to yourself in that way. I think it, <laughs> I think it, I think it exactly. is a bad, I think it's a bad idea to do that because. Um, we really need to believe in our work before anyone else believes in it. Okay. If we, if we are want to call ourselves amateur, then, you know, a collector reading that might want to, um, think, well, why would I want to collect, uh, from someone who doesn't think that they're doing something professionally? So I would leave that out. Um, so, uh, exploration, trying to capture, or, you know, maybe not trying to capture. How about an exploration capturing? It sounds more confident capturing some of the mysteries that I was offered on the streets I traveled. Capturing people has always been a hobby to me, but now as I read their stories, it all makes much more sense. Presenting some, some of my all-time favorite candid photographs for you to explore. Portraits from the street. And so, you know, just initial uh, look at the collection. I remember, uh, I suppose you've, you said, you know, we really like we like, really like these images, but you mentioned the title of uh, portraits from the streets, and it doesn't it doesn't feel uh, like all of these are portraits from the streets, and so uh, we wondered a bit about the uh, the titling. I mean, if you look at this man here, this one sold a beautiful image, Clock Man. I don't know if that's if, if we consider this like uh, from the streets or not. So I don't. How would you define um, from the streets, uh, Sibold? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, the clock image definitely. I know Indian streets, and we find such people on the streets. Yes, it is a street, but the third image is from the street, of course. But all the other images are from their homes. You know, it's not exactly the streets. When you say streets, uh, we have an impression of streets. What streets are? These are all from their homes. So it's not a wrong thing. It's okay to have the title, but it could have been better. You know, I think sometimes we don't put enough uh, efforts on the titles, but they really have to be something which can convey the whole idea of the collection is what I meant. Not a big deal for me, but yeah, it could have been better. Mm -hmm. and, and as far as uh, his collection goes, it's uh, what a uh, collection of six images maybe or seven because he's gone through that process of deleting images because this was a bigger collection, mix of color and black and white and all that. But eventually through spaces, we met him and et cetera, et cetera. And finally he reduced it to this uh, tight collection so that everything looks like one big uh, family of images. And uh, yeah, that's where it is now. <laughs> sure. And so some of the stronger shots for me are like, you know, the clock, the clock man one, I, I really enjoy. I, I love this one, um, uh, by, by the Forgotten Door. Love her expression. I love the, uh, I love the arms crossed, the hands, you know, the bones and the hands, all of the, uh, all of this has such a, um, telling tale about this woman's life for expression. Seems, seems that, I don't know, seems a bit sorrowing in a sense. And then it's like, uh, the, um, the surroundings sort of play off of, of, of the same idea. Composition's really beautiful. Um, uh, really love the image. <clears throat> this image great too. Really, uh, really intense capture of this man's, uh, expression. And Simone was talking about he didn't push it too much on the uh, the editing. And I, I, I enjoy that he didn't push it too much here, and uh, I think it, that seems like a like I love I love the two fingers like holding the jacket like he's about to open it up, and 
kind of show you uh, some of these remnants that he has with him. It seems like a pirate or something to me. And Mike, if I could add one thing on that image, uh, which is yeah. we are talking about uh, the Sloika collection, uh, where the background was coming in between. At least here, because of the depth of field, you get away with the background because there are a lot of stuff in the background. But still, it doesn't become a distraction because it's become a bouquet and we don't happen to look much in that direction. I think in the previous collection, we had that word about uh, using a longer uh, focal length. I think this is how it works. Even if it's a 50 mm, you don't even need long. A 50 mm or even a 35 mm at 1.8 or 1. Uh, f 2 can create that you know bouquet which can kind of make you get away with the not so great backgrounds. Yeah, I mean, the... Um... The further you pull the subject from the background, plus the closer you move up to the subject, the better bokeh you're you're going to have there. And obviously, Absolutely. that has to do with your uh, your your aperture as well. I mean, I have a, a lens I shoot with an f one aperture, and it's like a it's a fifty millimeter f one, but that's equivalent to like an eighty millimeter on a um, on a uh, full frame. And depth of field uh, that you can get with it's just really, really, really beautiful. So great few portraits. So. <clears throat> but you can do it on a two point eight. You know, like you said, as long as yeah. you pull them out from the background. <clears throat> beautiful image. What do, What do you What do you think about um, the, uh, the 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 exposure? Um, is it too, is it too dark? Is it, is it something that is just right for you? So boy, you, you shoot a lot of, uh, a lot of natural light looking images like this. And so what, what, what something, uh, what would be your uh, take on this? Is it perfect? Can it be done better? No, in my opinion, at least in my screen, it looks uh, perfect to me because, uh, it's not pushed it again too far. It's just the right amount of, uh, uh darks and uh, shadows and et cetera. And even it looks like he's done a good job on dodging and burning because the kid's face where it's uh, light is hitting, it's perfectly exposed. On the other side, the eyes are not going completely dark. The other eye is very much visible in both uh, mother as well as the kid. Uh, also, the background is well controlled. I hope it took it in a kind of a real black uh, situation, black background situation. Usually when you put them in a doorway, etc., you get this really, really dark backgrounds. And I hope uh, that's how he has created it. And overall, it looks great to me. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. <clears throat> but the other picture, the second image is the only image where I can critique something other than that. For me, all the images work perfectly well. And I told Ratnadweep about it. You know, all he had to do was step one step to the right and he would put the woman against that highlight. You know, she would cover the highlight in the background, the window in the background. Is it? So even. Yeah. Yeah. This one little dot right here bothers me. My eye wants to keep going back to it. You know, yeah, when I'd rather. I would both. Yeah. Yeah, you could have avoided both of them because uh, just one more step to the right and that's it. She would cover that uh, background issues. So now let me ask you a question that could be controversial to mm -hmm. some people and not to others, right? Let's, let's say this is documentary photography, okay? Now, what if we just wanted to get rid of this, you know? Is it not okay to um, just use Photoshop to just get rid of this little dot? Does that not make it documentary anymore? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question because uh, it depends on who is the documentary photographer because Stu McCurry got away with a number of things by doing uh, Photoshop stuff. You know, it came out uh, recently, it became a big controversy because he's known as a documentary photographer, but then he changed his story to visual storyteller. But it depends. I think if it's National Geographic, you won't mess with the image at all. You would make sure that you don't lose your job forever. But uh, yeah, it depends on the photographer. In my case, I'm not a documentary photographer as such. So I shoot uh, for the fun of it. You know, I have fun with photography and I do workshops and that's uh, that's my life. I don't submit mm -hmm. it to National Geographic as such. So in that case, yeah. when such, such leisure is there, I make sure that if, uh, suppose that one dot was bothering me, I would definitely clone it out. Me too. I, that's that's yeah. what that's exactly what I would do. Uh, I would just call it out. Um, and so we have the descriptions look really good. Artist, medium, price, edition, uh, little stories here, big specifications, license. They did a really really you know great job on that. They have properties. Yeah. yeah. 
Uh, one more thing on Mike, I wanted to add about his description was, I, it's a good thing that he even added about himself. You know, he added a quote about the collection. He added a quote about himself, uh, what he is as a photographer. Because I think, as Alpha always says, they buy an image, not a collection, and they want the information to be in that particular image for next uh, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, or however long it is. So I think this is a good idea as well, not only putting the license and edition, but also a bit about yourself and about the collection as a whole. No, I, I, I don't see anything wrong with bragging about yourself a little bit too, like in a sense of like, you know, if you've got some awards and stuff, like post it. Just, I mean, you know, at the bottom. Like, I, I don't, I don't think that you know the stuff that you've done and accomplished should be. This is not talking about this collection at all. But uh, you see some people where they have all their accomplishments and stuff at the top. And then it's like the artist statement below that. So it's like what they've accomplished has become as more important than the actual story. And I think that that's backwards. And so um, exactly, yeah, I've seen, a, I've seen a lot of that. And so, um, you know, I, I don't think people care as much on uh, Web3 about the awards and all that stuff as much as they care about like uh, how collectible it looks, um, how it resonates with them. and what they think of you as a as a as a community member and what you uh, what you've done to contribute. As you're saying uh, that, I was searching I was searching for hearts because I've become so used to the spaces. As you're saying that, I'm searching for the heart. Where do I throw the heart to, uh, Mike? Right now. <laughs> and we saying that the other day uh, that we wish we had uh, on Discord where we could throw up a 100 or hearts or something like that to uh, acknowledge uh, that someone said something that interesting so. yeah he had actually three questions uh, mike uh, one is a very important question because it's his genesis collection and it uh, didn't do too well for him because i think only uh, one one image sold and then he released a second collection which is almost sold out now so he's asking whether this collection which is his genesis uh, has been around for two months and only one piece has sold uh, where is the mistake why isn't it I'm, selling it's his question i mean i mean the mistake might be in like fully focusing on your new collection that's doing really well and selling out and so like having all of your energy there and you know maybe uh, pushing this uh this one to the wayside and so you know, maybe it's a good idea to you know get in some spaces and, and and talk about this one again and um or you know make a Twitter post with your favorite shot in here. Maybe your favorite shot is this woman by the forgotten door and make a Twitter post and give us a little story on what it's about. And then let us know where we can purchase it. If we're a collector, give us the link and, you know, you know, maybe, maybe a bunch of people will retweet it and then it gets to the right person and it gets sold. So I, I think it has more to do with like, what are you doing? Like have eyes on it. Cause like, zero favorites two favorites i mean one of that one of these favorites is me just from this three favorites. so there's just there's not a lot of visibility on the project and so if he's got a new project and it's doing really well it's probably because he's put you know a lot of his eggs into that basket and, you know and i've done the same i've had multiple projects all at the same time you sort of flood your own market it becomes difficult to um manage all that stuff happening at once it becomes frustrating and so uh yeah that's my advice yeah, but uh, in his favor, because I, I know him for, since the day I got to Twitter, when I got to Twitter, he was on this collection and he would come every single day, talk about these stories. And he tells a long story about these wonderful people that he's captured because they come from a very unique community and all that he's been doing, but he didn't get the traction for two months. And that's when he decided, okay, let me move on and try something else. And that's when the new collection came in, which is now doing good. Uh, so, of course, he's talking about it more now because that's selling. Uh, but yeah, you're right. Maybe time to post some threads and stories. Sure. Uh, any other yeah. questions? No, the other two questions are already covered, uh, honestly. Yeah, we already okay, talked about great. it. Yeah. Cool. So, I mean, we should probably jump on to the next one since we're, <laughs> we're an hour and five minutes in and we're just at number four, but uh, it's a great session. So, it's uh, it's fine. Um, so, uh, sadhus, is that how you say it in India? These are like monks or, um, sadhu. awakened yeah. sadhu, yeah, awakened sadhu. People, right? Sadhu means a monk. Yeah. Monk. Excellent. 
edition one of one uh, sadhus in India are, are um, a special category of people who are spiritually awakened. Uh, a person who wants to become a sadhu must first seek a guru. There he or she must perform uh, guru sava, guru sava uh, which means service. The guru decides whether the person is eligible to take sannyasa by observing uh, sisya, the person who wants to become a sadhu or a sannyasi. Uh, if the person is eligible, guru uh, abdesya, which means teachings, is, is done. Only then the person transforms uh, into a sannyasi or a sadhu. Uh, there are different types of sannyasis in India who follow different uh, sa sampradya. <laughs> I'm hoping I'm saying this well. I think I'm doing pretty good. Um, but, all <laughs> <laughs> but all, uh, but all sadhus, sadhu, uh, have a common goal, attaining uh, ma maksha, a uh, maksha, uh, liber uh, liberation. And then there's a license. So it uh, sounds like you guys, uh, guys and girls go through an intense process uh, that's uh, um, that's about spiritual awakening. And so um, I went into the images and, you know, right off the bat, you know, I said this to Bill and I said, you know, these seem very like digitally altered. And so they're listing this under photography. And um, and I can tell by looking at some of these images that I feel like, you know, they have a lot of soul. And I don't, I don't exactly like that the the um, the photographer chose to go the route of, um, you know, using some Photoshop program or some app to uh, render these images. Uh, when I first came into the NFT space, I thought, well, I'm a photographer. Photography is not going to do well in the NFT space, and so I downloaded these apps on my phone, and I was like. Let me take my photos and try to transform it into something that looks like it's an NFT or it's moving or something. And then, you know, I started to see uh, people selling their, you know, their their photography as just their photography without edit, any editing in that way. Or, uh, and I, I was like, wow, photography has its place. And so um, looking at these uh, made me think, you know, I have to see this uh, person's uh, other work because I want to see you know if they had not edited like this and it's a boat said they do have work that's non edited like in this way and so um, we're gonna we're gonna look at some of that work um, compared to this work and like I said this is opinions um, of course you know maybe some people are more interested in, in this type but uh, so he has a Twitter which is great so be able to pull it up and um, you know right here we can see the edited and then move over, right? Now we're looking at the images that are non-edited and these, it will, you know, edit in some way, but they're, they're, they're still true to life. And these ones speak on a, on a much greater and more emotional uh, level to me because I, I feel I can see the person as, as they are. Um, the only gripe that I'd have with this is that, you know, this is still heavily edited, this bottom left image here because the, you can clearly see to me that the beard um, was, you tried to use like a, a black paint brush or um, uh, some type of, uh, you know, heat healing tool brush to get out this and it's just too sharp. It, it doesn't make sense to the actual real beard. So I would, you know, try to make some more natural stuff like this uh, bottom right image and these other three uh, images here, these ones speak a lot more to me than the, uh, the other ones to me. And, and how do you feel about that? Suppose? Yeah, I mean, you covered exactly what I had to say. Uh, the thing that I feel uh, Doctor is doing is he's pushing it too far. You know, it's not required. In NFT, we know that street photography is well accepted. Indian photographers are doing quite good with their portraits and uh, streets. So there is a place for natural images. Uh, if that was not the case, yes, experiment whatever you want. But when there's something which is already there and doing well, I don't think we need this kind of uh, extra push to uh, make them look uh, so artistically different. I think I, my advice to doctor, I know him, he's coming with me in one week's time to Mazai Mara on a trip with me. I met him over here and I have a good relationship with him and I can say it loud and clear. Please burn this collection and put the natural pictures out because all the compositions are good. All the portraits are good. You know, you don't need to do 
this extra stuff to make them look uh, other way around because normal pictures will sell uh, let's keep it real and uh, i'm sure the game will change for you with that uh, also i want to say one more thing his title of the uh, you know collection is sadhus in india if you go to his open sea on the top if you check the link it says sadhus of india so i don't know whether it matters but mm, something which could have been controlled uh, if i'm if i saw it right and also one more thing is the profile picture i don't know whether the profile picture of this collection belongs to the doctor or it's from google so you have to be a little bit careful about that too maybe sure and so you know i i got to completely echo that that i would you know i would i personally i would burn i would burn the series because i think that your portraits stand alone uh, like you said keeping it real are better than these ones um just you know they just make me feel like you put them through an app and tried to make them more artistic than um they have to be because you're uh doing great on your own you are the artist so i don't think you need to put it through some uh, device that renders that and so this is very easy for you right because it's on it's on uh, open c and so there's no volume trader there's no sales so um you can just literally click images and delete them and you know uh you know i'd be willing to help you if you sent me a dm on you know uh, portraits that you've made and you know how many to put into a collection and stuff like that and uh, get you a collection that is uh, that that's going to be more more collectible in my opinion and maybe some people are interested in this i don't know like i said this is our opinion um but i, I we think that you're a great photographer and that you don't need to use these app, these uh, these apps and and these um these these visual transitions here any and, other uh, like, questions uh, uh, can go we ahead. Can we can we go to the description? I think I saw something in his description which was wasn't right. Uh, no, I'm in the image description to the individual uh, images. And yeah, no. yeah. Let's go in individual image description. Yeah, we're missing uh, um we're missing some information yeah. in here. Like we we you know as to to, to first of all to sub submit um you know we're we're requiring um to to have you know at the very least uh, you have to have the addition. Like one of one edition, I, I do see it. It's in the properties, and he has a lot of properties, and, and that's fantastic. And you know, um, but you know, I, I think it's safe to to say that we should also put the artist name, collection name, uh, and the edition and stuff into the description, uh, just just to make collectors even feel uh, more safe. But great, great, great job on the properties. And did you have something else to say uh, on that, Mr. And that's all. Uh, I knew that his description was not full, so I just wanted to point that out. Thank you. Perfect. And uh, as far as uh, questions goes, I think we covered everything that he asked. Okay, great. And so the next collection I'd want to talk about is um, is Let's Be Kids uh, by Sammy. You can, Sammy. Or Sammy, you can. And so um, I live in Istanbul. Started for uh, okay. So uh, I, I read I read this. Uh, before uh, studying the work, and so I had a lot of issues with the description there. So um, exactly. I live in Istanbul. I, I live in Istanbul. I started photography in 2008. It soon turned into a passion. I am interested in street photography and documentary genre. I do therapy for myself on the streets of Istanbul. I have a photo book published in 2018. This book was about stray cats. Okay, so you're you're all over the place on this description here, and so let's. Let's focus on like let's focus on what this story is about, right? There's a lot of beautiful images about these children here, and so more of an artist statement and less of like all these little one sentences about who you are, what you've done, and stuff like that. So, and you know, photography competitions and such. And you know, if you want to put that information, um, you know, make space and like put it at the bottom, but. Um, and we could try to help you write an artist description and, you know, most of it's about, you know, how did, how do you, how do you feel uh, when you take photographs as a photographer? How does it make you feel? How do these children make you feel? Why do you, why do you, why are you interested in this area? And then write us a little something and, you know, you know, don't give us too information, but enough to just give us enough information so that the photos could then speak on their own. And so I'm not going to read any more because, so also it copied and pasted. So um, I do therapy on my street. So this is just the same thing, copy and paste it twice here and here. So it's a huge mistake. So we're gonna have to delete, I would probably just delete all of this and write an artist statement and then um, have us review the artist statement. So, but the, the photographs though, um, 
the ones that I favorited, um, these, uh, these portraits are really beautiful, right? Love this. Um, this child is just, looks like he's in just pure joy and ecstasy. He looks so happy. And the, the doll he's holding is mimics kind of him. It's the eyebrows and uh, the hair. And, and, and the doll is, is going in this direction and he's being pulled in this direction. And it's beautifully atmospheric with this fog coming in. Right, Sabode? We both love this image. <clears throat> really, Absolutely. really. If I, yeah. If I had to buy something from this collection, this would be the image. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Same. That was, that's the same for, well, 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 maybe it would be this image for me. I don't know. I, lo I love, yeah. <laughs> I love this image. Um, the, the expression of this child, it's so beautiful. I don't, I don't know. I don't even know how to like put it into words. All the strands of hair that just come and just lay perfectly like, a, like, just like a, like a gorgeous, uh, person that just came out of the sea like ethereal it doesn't feel real even and then you have this kid here in the composition off to the side and the bridge in the background phenomenal shot so i, I you know but but a lot more expensive though right so 0 0.25 versus uh 0 0.17 uh, 0 0.15 so you know sabode talked about the prices were a little confusing right so maybe not three price ranges, maybe two, maybe you can bump it higher on like your hero image, right? So you want to talk about that? Yeah, I mean, you and I do that. Uh, I mean, uh, I don't know what's right, what's wrong when it comes to pricing, but you and I do two or three kinds of pricing. But yeah, I mean, it's his choice, totally cool. So I, I would not comment on pricing at all because uh, sometimes maybe he has a uh, much more deeper meaning with that one image which is priced higher. And Alpha recently told in our space that if you really have a reason to price it high, tell it in the description. Tell us exactly yes. why. Cool. So let's see if let's see if you know there's information on that. Um, uh, about the photo, many people uh, left their country after the Syrian civil war. Uh, some of them came to Turkey. Uh, children grow up here. They have uh, different problems. Most of them do not have regular income, health, education, etc. Um, we can we can see them living in ruined home, uh, ruined houses, in urban trans uh, formation areas. A state and non governmental organizations are trying to help these people. Um, and so I think so, that that description I think goes across all the pictures. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, is it the same one for all the pictures? Or? I made a guess. Oh. I don't know. Oh, you can buy it, Mike. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have the capital. <laughs> I've bought too many NFTs already. Um, live in Istanbul. So this now this is interesting. This oh, is a different okay. description about him. This is about him. Yeah. Um. So so this is a little. Um, so you have a little couple problems with your, you know, first on your main description you've copied and pasted it twice and and you've had a, it's it's kind of all over the place. In this one here, um, you're talking about yourself before you're talking about the description of, of about the photo. About the photo should come first, um, then this information uh, afterwards. So about you, but, but but another beautiful image. Like we, you know, really love the uh, love the images of these children. Yeah. I love Occupying it. Occupying the space. Yeah. Yeah. You talked about this one. If you want to talk about this shot. Yeah, I mean, I truly love it. You know, it, if it if it's turned into black and white, it'll look like a Henry Cartier Bresson kind of image because it has that feel, very candid, very real. I mean, the moment is so beautiful. Like uh, we have a photographer in India. Uh, he's called Ragurai. He's a Magnum photographer. He says when you make a picture, it should be such that when you put that picture back in the moment, the life should just continue without any interference. And that's exactly what I see here. If you put this picture back in the moment. Life will move on without any entrance. You know, that's what I see here. I really love wow. this image. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. But one thing Mike uh, pointed out when you were talking about this is the title of each image is exactly the same. Uh, there's no yeah, difference. I... No number one, number two. <laughs> yeah, let's be kids childhood. Let's be kids childhood. And so <laughs> that's, you know, that's another thing. So 
I, my biggest critique on this whole series has nothing to do with the photos and it has more to do with um, your descriptions and your titling. I would take more time on descriptions and titling and then making them um, more clean. I think it's, uh, I think it's imp an important one. We talked about this one, Sabotas Fish, um, you know, you specifically said you don't feel that it, that it fits. I, I, I don't think it does as well. Um, Install. Yeah, because m most of the right. images in the collection have that life, you know, have that moment of pa passing moments. But here, the moment has stopped because the fourth wall is broken between the photographer and the subject. So that's what I feel. B most of the images are very candid, very real, full of laughter. Yeah. Yeah, makes sense. And qu questions from the um, from the artist? Um. The question is, he's not able to sell. Um, what should he do? Not second able is, to sell. Uh, is the, uh, okay. Yeah. Um, Go ahead. Second What's price the second? Is, the, is the price too high or too low? And the um, next question is, uh, let me just expand the next question one second. It's a big question, I guess. Yeah. Is there any pictures that disrupt the integrity of the collection? How many should pictures should be in a collection? What should be taken into consideration while pricing for NFT? So there's a question on pricing. Other one is about the cohesiveness of the collection. And the third one is about why it's not selling. Um, okay, well, let's just cover the easier ones first. Pricing, um, I don't know, three different price frames. Uh, one, one is higher, a lot higher than, than the original price. Maybe uh, add some information in there as to why that one is... Um, why you're pricing it higher, like what, what the reasoning behind that is. Uh, the other one is why is it, you know, why is the work not uh, not selling? That's, you know, that, that one's a more complicated, right? Because I'd, I'd have to kind of, you know, investigate a bit, right? So, I mean, like, let me look at your Twitter. So it's like, um, so how, you know, how how active are you on, on Twitter? Uh, let's see. Um, yeah. Last post, uh, retweet. Well, this is retweeted March 19th. Oh, this is uh, eight hours ago. Oh, retweeting other people. Yeah, I, I did check that. He is uh, actively retweeting others and getting involved. And even as media, I think the stories are less. He's not telling the stories in his media if you go to his Twitter. So let's see. Uh, yeah, I mean, so there's not a lot of. But when was this so activity? The same when was this published? This um, this this work. What, what did it come out? Four days ago. Okay, it's only been four days. Um, oh, okay. So yeah, so it's only been out four days. Why is it not selling? Uh, well, I mean, did you build anticipation for your uh, collection drop? I mean, that's one thing like, I don't know, my last collecting drop, I built anticipation by like reaching out through a graphic designer and having her like design uh, an image for me with a date on it, like coming soon and stuff like that. I, you know, uh, um, I let the community know that the stuff was coming out. I reached out to people who have collected my previous stuff and uh, asked if they were interested in being whitelisted and seeing the work before everyone else. And um, so I don't know, there's, there's a lot of different ways in which you can market or, or whatnot, or, you know, do you, do you, do you actively know any collectors or speak with them? Um, have you gone spaces and talked about the specific series and what it means to you? Um, you know, this is a start here. You're, you, you've, uh, you've got, you joined the AMA, you know, we really like the work, you know, that'll get some eyes on it. So I, I, you know, it's hard for me to say. Because, you know, sometimes my work isn't selling for a long time and, I'm, and I don't know. I have no, and I have no idea why because I'm, you know, I'm super active and maybe it's that I sometimes maybe yet we have to go out and create more work. And I, I, for me, I think sometimes it's just, it's just the market is down or whatever it might be. But I don't know. I think the biggest thing is to not, you know, get yourself um, upset over it and, you know, remember what you're here for and, you know, and that you know you, you want your images on the blockchain and you, you you're here to build community and help and um and then the universe will uh, lay everything out for you in, in place and work and work hard uh, and then that's that's all i can say i don't i don't know 
Yeah, I mean, if it's only four days since it's minted, I think it's too early to ask uh, why it's not selling because just four days, it takes time. And also the pictures, nothing wrong at all. You know, they're some of the best environmental portraits I've seen in this session. So he's got a great eye on managing the environment around him. So, which is a very strong point. And I'm sure, you know, just the descriptions has to be updated a little bit less about awards and more about the image could help. Yeah, and then the, and then the titles are, are all the same. So yeah, you're thinking it from a, from a collector's standpoint. Do they want to collect something with a title that's just the same as some other title? I, I don't know. I don't know. But I, I think I think you got to clean up the description stuff. So if that, uh, uh, any other questions on this one, I think that covers it all. Yeah. Okay. Great. Great. Um, next one is um, uh, award winning special series, and I'm just very turned off by the title here. So. Um, would definitely consider uh, changing your title here if that's even possible on foundation um, to something that's more compelling to the to a collection and not so um, so so vague. Um, and so, uh, let's see. So there's only you know there's only four uh, four images here, right? So this is a collection four images, but it doesn't exactly feel like a collection. Uh, it feels like one of ones. It feels like, a, um, you know, uh, it feel, I'm, I'm sure it feels like singles, a uh, single one of ones. And if that's the case, then, you know, maybe you need to put that in the description here, but they don't cohesively work uh, together. And we looked at some of these and we really enjoyed them. Like, that's just a gorgeous moment. And like, even without the bird, it would be a gorgeous moment, right? But with the bird, it just transcends it to just another level and the rink, you know, there's the wrinkling of the carpet here and the, the, um, the aging of the wall, the, the, the man, everything, the child playing, the expression, the beautiful image, right? And, you know, another another beautiful shot, but completely different from the one we just looked at, right? This is um, this is a staged um, family portrait that's an absolutely fantastically staged family portrait. I mean... Uh, really beautiful i think they did a great job on the lighting all the expressions feel so genuine all these people feel if, uh, it's just a fantastic image really really like the image i don't think any problem in your images i mean um i mean we weren't too crazy about this one it doesn't feel uh as you know it doesn't it doesn't feel as strong as uh, as the other images i, I, I don't know I, th I think some of that has to do with maybe the uh the, the express Maybe to me it's the expression. I'm I'm not sure. What do you think, Sibyl? Because it got some interesting yeah. geometry and colors, but the expression for me is just it's not there. Yeah, I mean for me this image is the probably the weak, uh, weakest image in the collection because it doesn't have that X factor that all his images hold. Because he has a signature, you know, when you see his images, you are grabbed. All your attention is going to the images, but that's missing in this. It's too easy for this photographer knowing his capability, looking at other images. So this image at one Ethereum, uh, I don't know. And in this collection as a whole, I don't think so. Yep. But I want to talk about that black and white image, which is uh, the finest. Uh, I mean, he's showing uh, people who are staying under a bridge. They don't have a home. They don't have a roof over their head. But what he did was he showed their dignity. You know, he showed them with extreme respect. The guy sitting with his legs on top of each other, like he's really showing the dignity of these people, which may be missing in real life because they're staying in such a poor conditions, but still photographer has a choice on how he wants to present the people. And I think he really did an extremely good job. And uh, it's a great processing too. Uh, processing is fantastic. So, I mean, a photographer who can create this image and having the other image, the guy playing that uh, musical instrument doesn't come together at all. Yeah, and I think that's really well said that, you know, I didn't know that they were living under a bridge and uh, the fact that you you said that the, the photographer chose to photograph them with such dignity, um, just that that just adds just a whole other element and power to this photograph. It's really beautiful, so. Um, and yes, I mean, one Ethereum, one Ethereum yeah. for that image is uh, the right price, according to me. Yeah, I mean, it, nothing less should do for that image, in my yes. opinion. Mm -hmm. And this is the first image we can look at. And, uh, Maiden's Tower. Uh, interesting shot. I mean, I think it's got something, got something to it. Uh, yeah, I mean, not 
Yeah. Very yeah. moody, very, it's very storytelling. It's kind of got a rainy, uh, uh, it feels like uh, it's the cover for uh, some type of like a uh, lighthouse drama film or something uh, on the sea. I don't know. It's not something a little eerie about it to me too. Yeah, I truly love this image because what we do when it rains, we clean our lens, but he decided not to clean his lens. He thought, okay, let the raindrops be there and create the drama that it creates. And also the three elements, you know, the lighthouse or whatever the thing is in the background, plus this woman who looks like a ghost walking out of the lighthouse and the birds, you know, which are, are always part of any horror movie. So I think I am reading it that way. You know, it looks like a scene out of a, a Hitchcock movie kind of a thing. So I really love it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it, it, that, this is the thing about, you know, I talked about foundation the other day when I said that, you know, it's, it's, it's tough because, like, they force it into a collection now. And so, you know, you used to be able to just kind of drop these as one of ones. And, you know, they, they, they didn't have to be forced to sit next to other images that, you know, don't speak to the next image. And that's, I, I think they had a market for that, that no one else really had. I think Foundation had that market where they, they kind of had the, the, the one, of, one of one single image market and they did away with it. And, you know, I, I don't, I don't necessarily agree. And there's a lot of people that say, oh, well, I think you could create a collection that's called uh, single images, but you could do that. Of course you could do that. But that doesn't mean that you can put an accordion player next to um, a family portrait of people under the bridge and that they're going to speak to each other. And that, you, cool. that you know, I might want to put a concert photograph into the same, uh, into the same folder um, where I have, a, you know, a black and white portrait documentary and it doesn't make sense. And so whether or not you want to say that it's possible, you know, I mean, it's possible, of course it's possible, but it's, um, it's, it's very difficult in the curation process to put multiple genres of, of photography within the same collection and allow them to, uh, allow them to work. I'm not saying that this is multiple genres, but the idea of uh, doing that. So, yeah, I, mean, Any I don't know whether, I don't know whether Alpha is in the room, but uh, during the recent uh, space, I, ha I asked him the very same question because I go through this problem as well, which is uh, I have a lot of pictures which are standalones. They can't fit into any collection. So I asked him as to how to deal with the situation when there is no foundation now doing the one-off ones. And he said, as long as you specifically mention that this is a collection of absolutely individual images, they all stand on their own. And even if you put it as a title and et cetera, and make it very clear to the collectors that each image is standing on its own. He said it doesn't matter; it should be fine. And that's what Alpha had to say about that particular sure. issue. And, but you know, and, yeah. and while, problem, while while yeah. I agree with that, um, mm. it doesn't take away from the fact that visual appeal uh, is still going to take part in when someone is looking at the work because. Sure, you could put a bunch of one of ones and describe in the description that these are all your best photos from different, but if it doesn't feel like it's from the same photographer still, it's exactly it, and it's in the same collection, it might it might stray off some collectors from wanting to buy it. So like it's like if you think about a museum, right? The curators of a museum. Uh, don't necessarily take all different genres and curate them right next to each other. It just it just doesn't usually work like that because it just doesn't really look that good. And so, I, you know, while I agree, I, I I tend to disagree in some regard, and I I won't personally do it. I haven't personally done it. So like even if I put, so even if I was to do a one of one singles collection, it would be a one of one singles street collection, or it'd be a one of one singles, you know. Uh, neon uh, night scenes collection or something like that 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 maybe they didn't speak to each other or, but they were at least part of the same genre and felt like they were from the same photographer so that's all I have to say about that because uh, when I go to when I go to the museum which is in Abu Dhabi which is one of the finest in the world uh, they have these paintings you know they have a huge uh, range of paintings in one single room it's like an NFT collection in one place but when you look at them, some of them are of Napoleon on his horse. 
other one is a very modern art other one is something else but still they present it in such a way that they all look like one big family of uh, uh, stuff you know i think it's also about presentation and the signature and the consistency you know like here the problem with that guy playing the music is that consistency is broken by that picture mhm it is exactly and so if you go to the description here too it just says um a specially created series of photographs that have received awards in international and national competitions so you know not the most compelling description right this is just you know would love to hear more about what you know wh- what gets you out at taking pictures what really sets you off why do you love taking photographs what is it about these people you know would you like to feel a little more about that and less about this i mean if you want to talk about your um your awards international competitions you know put that at the end like put that at the end we've already we've talked about that through this so any other specific questions from this actual um photographer yeah there there are three questions one is uh, which we already done can you evaluate the collection technically and aesthetically uh, that's done next is can you evaluate the number of photos in the collection and the pricing i think even that is test uh, the last one is why it's not selling Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, why why it's not selling? I'm, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go long on this because we kind of kind of went long on the last one, and so like, um, well, one it, one it doesn't feel cohesive as a collection. I don't know if that's why it's not selling. Um, two, if you have if you have not already built like a community or fan base, um, one ETH could be could be high. Um, that that i mean I, i don't usually talk about prices the reason for why things don't sell but i i don't know i don't know the background uh, i'd have to study it into the photographer's background more uh, and see what what kind of like community and stuff that they built and and what they what they've done and um you know yeah. what the reputation is like in the space but um you know i i i haven't specifically um tried to sell any of my 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 photos for one eth uh, quite yet so i i don't know um Uh, it it could have to do with you know many things like joining spaces and discord and discords and sharing and uh, you know overall engaging showcasing other artists etc so that would be my answer i think i mixed up the questions but it's almost the same questions not a problem <laughs> okay so we covered the questions then yeah yeah cool yeah i don't yeah i normally i just I I I like to talk about the work first and then the questions after like normally we 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 wind up covering the uh the questions or talking about the work and then if I have the questions I kind of I I flow better when I don't have the questions. But, okay, so portrait <laughs> portraits of uh Anatolian man. Um be a good idea like uh Sabod said to have your Twitter link up in here so people can just kind of uh, jump over your to your uh Twitter. a uh, collection of photos that consists of eight photos uh total each photo is worth a 0.2 uh, ethereum as a photographer living in Anatol- anatolia uh, most of my photos are human centered uh, i want to prepare and present a collection that uh, reflects the sincerity and sincerity of the people living in uh, anatolia um i shoot portraits of men working in the countryside and in their natural environment try to make eye contact uh, with people uh, when when taking their uh, when we're taking their photos so you know um i'm very critical uh when it comes to like processing and so like you know my first take on seeing this was like ooh uh ooh some of these feel really really pushed so um you know i'm just going to be pr- critical first Uh, and so like this shot for me it feels it feels really pushed like super pushed like um like the shadows uh, um and highlight highlights just don't make sense cuz you you like pulled so many shadows up and 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 bumped clarity so high that it's i think it's taken away um from from some of the soul of the image for me um and you know maybe some people like this aesthetic but it it's not my favorite i think the the one where it works best is 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 um is this image here uh, i mean this is just like this is a beautifully fantastic image when i look at this image i i i, look, I feel like this man is like the guy that goes down with his ship like he's just like a powerful figure lives in a, like a lighthouse <laughs> and 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 he's a real a real seaman 
you know what I'm saying? And like, it, it looks like you shot this through like, um, you know, the window of the boat crashed up and it's just the, the lines from his face and, and the scratches It just all, it all really comes together. What a, what a fantastic shot. I mean, even if you push this a lot with the clarity, at least for me in this one, it, it works. What do you think? I suppose. 100%. I mean, this image, I, the moment I saw Misan collected this, that's when I came across this work and I was like, wow, <laughs> like as a portrait photographer, even I was taken aback by this because it's such a great, great image. And that's, that's when I would be curious to see what else this photographer has to offer. And when I visit, I was kind of, again, like, oh God, okay. So that kind of a feeling, you know, like, uh, I wanted to see more of those images, but what I came across was these, which are not bad at all, other than that one image, which is now the second image, which is, like Mike said, pushed really, really far. And it's called Uncle Recep. That's gone too far. But apart from that, I still like these images, though I don't do wide, wide-angle portraits, but still it takes a kind of a different kind of a talent to manage it when you have a wide-angle, because you're exposing, you, you're keeping most of your frame empty because your person is taking one corner of the frame and the rest of the frame it's your job to fill it up and make sure that it's working so that's why he's doing it well actually uh, to be very honest because despite having the person in a corner in most of the pictures he's using the other side to create an environmental portrait and he's not pushed too far in most of the images but that one yeah, image which you already mentioned he's gone uh, beyond the norms yeah and this is a beautiful, this is a beautiful uh, image here, right? I love the man's expression in the, in the foreground. And I like the man's expression in the background too. So it has soul to it. I mean, I don't, you know, maybe he didn't push this one too far. Like this is, this is fine with me. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, most of the images are a little pushy, but still not as pushy as the second one. Uh, the uncle Recept image has yeah. gone really, really far. Yeah, that one image is killing the collection, in my opinion. Sure. So this this was one that I thought was pretty interesting using the wide angle here. I love the detail in the uh, in the face. I love the lines. I love how the lines then come down and bring you to the horses here. That are um, yeah. That are, what what is this device that the that are on the horses here? Is this to carry extra things? Interesting. No, they use it to. Plow the plow the field, oh, to plow the know, field. To, before planting. Oh. Yeah, plow the field. Yeah. But should, yeah, that's as I said, even here, he put the person in such a corner, which is great. Nothing wrong with that. But at the same time, he made sure that the other corner is taken by elements which contribute. So he's good at that, maintaining the order of the image. So all the yeah. images have that same common common factor. Yeah. I mean, I I wouldn't mind seeing this photographer shoot with like a 50 or an 85 millimeter lens and see what he can capture. Because, um, you know, I tend to uh, really, really love portraits at those focal lengths. And it seems like these guys are really comfortable with him. You know, like it, it's, it's not easy to just like get someone to be comfortable with you enough to allow you to be this close to their face. Because if you have a wide angle like that, you have to be pretty close to this guy's face with the lens, right? For him to allow this. And so access, uh, beautiful images have a lot to do with, well, one, obviously the skill of the photographer, but access is a big one, right? And building relationships with big people is a big one too. And so he obviously has the access. He's obviously building relationships and there's some really great shots here. And I, I want to see more, I want to see more portraits and I want to, I'd like to see a variety of, of different lenses used to make those portraits. And um, like I said, this one is just absolutely beautiful and such a stand, stand out uh, image and congrats to the person who, who collected that, that shot. What 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 specific questions does the photographer have on on, on portraits of uh, Anatolian men? Um, first is what do you think about the collection? I think you already talked about that. Uh, the next is mm -hmm. any other advice or suggestion from you about the selection of images and pricing? Selection of um, image and pricing and overall, it's a big question. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, selection and pricing of images. I mean, is the, the image selected well yeah. and is the pricing good? Yeah, the pricing is fine. 0 0.2 is totally fine. And like the number of images is also fine. Like um, we discussed something. I like I'd pull, I would pull this shot 
like but i would i would add i would just like re-edit it so that it's not so pushed you know it's 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 a little just it's a little too much and um it's a beautiful one. Yeah. Wow. This is, this is, this is great. I didn't look at this up close yeah. before. Wow. That's really good. So. And you again, know. you can see in the background, he has used the sheeps in the background. Again, an element which contributes. So he really does that well. I really like that part. Yeah. I mean, the editing is surreal, but it's still, but that's still a really beautiful shot. So, um, yeah, I, I think the pricing is good. The number of the collection is good. Uh, yeah, and his descriptions. Um, he's missing information in the descriptions. Uh, wait, maybe not. Photographer. Uh, what, it's a bit jumbled up, but he, he has the license. Oh, and he also has a dish in one of one over here. Yeah, you can make it look cleaner if you want. Got the license and stuff. That's great. All right, cool. I mean... Yeah, I mean, uh, did you have any other questions as to why it's not moving or anything like that? Or Actually, he's, uh, I know him and he comes every single day to grind on Twitter spaces, etc. So he's been working hard, you know, from that side of the uh, world, he is doing all that needs to be done. So why oh, is not selling? He, I don't he, well, it is, it, is, it is selling. He sold two in the last oh, day. <laughs> so Short Stack bought two of them. In the past day, he's collected 297 short stack. All right, cool short stack. Thanks for supporting our artists. Awesome, great, um, cool. Then I think we can move on to the next collection. Then yeah, perfect. Thanks for um, co-hosting, man. You're really, oh, really helpful anything. bouncing bouncing off of you. Um, it's very, it feels very, uh, very simple to uh, to do this. With you. Very enjoyable. <clears throat> so, uh, Hidden Portraits in the Streets by Arawana uh, Lee Mella. Is that you say? I'm sorry. Uh, oh, Aaron, uh, artist name, Aaron Akumar uh, Nali Mella. Okay, there, it's written down here. I'm trying to read the Twitter name. Okay. Um, photography for me is like having a love affair with my soul, uh, it always reflects my inner thoughts and feelings. Portrait photography uh, through portraits, uh, people can reveal their true essence and personalities. Through the set of images, I wanted to show some hidden faces in the streets where beauty is just another name. The main thing I was trying to capture was their smiles and the intention in their eyes. These children were captured in the streets of Delhi and uh, Rajasthan, Rajasthan during my recent travel trip to these places. Uh, I have met people in the NFT spaces and the good thing is I am traveling with them to capture people in the streets where most of the people neglect these beautiful faces. Our travel trip is still on and we are traveling to Mathura and Varanasi uh, to capture the Holi festival in those places. I'm jealous. I'm so jealous. Uh, we have traveled to capture uh, some hidden tribes in uh, Rahastan, two. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. I'm getting used to these uh, these these Indian names. All right. Um. And so he and so you know look here at the portraits. You know, uh, first thing that stand stood out to us was you know obviously this one just you know while it's a beautiful portrait I really love it like I really love the lighting the kids expression the colors it just doesn't fit into the collection because everything is a, a very up close um, portrait and this is environmental so. That one was the one that we, we thought, you know, this just doesn't make sense in this collection here. And then um, I, I, I favored some of the ones that like stood out uh, more to me. And let's go look at some of these. Um, really beautiful portrait, like um, great, great lighting in this, right? Colors. <clears throat> This shot here, which we were talking about, and Sabo really liked this shot because this is um, more of a lighting that he's interested in, in using. This is where you put someone like what into like a, a sheltered uh, space, but you just have some light coming in. You want to talk on that, Sabo, please? Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is 
uh, as, I, as I told you, it's my kind of portrait. You know, these are the kind of portraits that I do all the time, which is control the background, control the light, make that light come one way and uh, make sure that, you know, uh, the eyes shine bright. And that's exactly what he has done. This is definitely my top image in the collection. And even the other images are all good. You know, light control is quite good. It's not very harsh. It's very soft. Uh, so overall, his collection is great. As Mike already pointed out, that one image, which is great, but it doesn't fit in because it's an ornamental and it doesn't go in this collection. And the other image I had to pick was number five. Not this one. Five, you said? Uh, five, down there. Last but one. Ah. Yeah, that one. Yeah, he, even here, uh, looking at his collection and then looking at this image, it feels like photographer has traveled five years when he started his photography, he took this image and then he came to the other images which we already saw. You know, that feels, that, that kind of a gap because the background is not controlled. Uh, the light is very harsh for a, a feminine picture and all those things, you know, which are not right with this image. If I was curating your work right now and your work was not minted, this would definitely not be in the collection at all because of all those reasons. So it, it it's not consistent, you know, that's what I mean to say. Those two images should not be in this collection. And one more Im image I want to point out is number two. I'm sure he named, numbered it number two because he loves it. The kid, uh, Mike. Uh, yeah, that one. Whenever you see a number two or number one, that means it's the closest to the photographer. I'm sure you like this image because it's a good image. Definitely, it's a beautiful image. But the problem is, again, the stuff, you know, when we take a portrait, we usually tend to forget what's in the corner of the image because we are so focused on their eyes and their expression, we forget the corners. Look at the green. Even at the bottom, there's some highlight of a plate or whatever it is. Yeah. Our hands, hands are chopped off. I mean, the fingers at the bottom is, again, not a good thing. So all those things could have been corrected by a very simple way, which is turning your camera, camera horizontal. That's it. You know, you would have a proper portrait of the kid, a close-up. And that would be enough. You know, if Mike can hit Command Plus, I don't know, Mac or Windows. But if you can zoom into this uh, window, you'll see that crop happen as you go deep into this picture. So, yeah. One more step, Mike, if you can. Just one more. They won't give me one more. Oh, it, it won't. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Here we go. Right there. Oh, yeah, there it is. That's it. Yeah, you could cut it, uh, cut the kid's photo to the forehead. That's totally cool. And that's about it. You know, you have your image and now the eyes are more connecting because there's not so many distractions and we go directly to our eyes and that's all you need. So this was a very easy fix at the point of shooting or even if you want to crop, nowadays cameras have 45 megapixels so we can easily crop it out. Yeah, for sure. So apart from that, all the images are brilliant. I got a minus out. <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so what, what, what lens do you think is, is being shot with something like this? Cause this one feels like, um, like a little bit, maybe a little distorted. Is it just yeah, me? Because it's wider. Yeah. I mean, well, I, that's one thing I always tell in my workshops that when you shoot a woman, you kind of have to use by a, like a thumb rule, anything above 50 mm, you know, my yeah. go-to is 7,200 because it, it makes their face more beautiful you know that's what it does it crafts the face 7200 has that feeling that's why a lot of fashion photographers use 7200 all the time because it makes the face have a different feel but when you use this wide angles this is what happens you know the face becomes yeah. more distorted so i would use a wide angle like faisal was doing on a man because that's fine you know even a sunlight is fine but when it comes to a female you have to control the light as well as the lens that you use will make a huge yeah. difference yeah, wide angle is good for environmental portraits too. And you also have to yeah. be careful with the wide angle that, you know, if you're going to shoot with a wide angle, and I'm not talking about this photo, but that the stuff in the center that, you know, you don't want to be distorted should be in the center. The stuff that's off to the sides is probably going to get a little distorted unless you're paying a lot of money and they're really good lenses. But my go to is similar, not seven, not 70 to 200 exactly, but like an 85, I'd really yeah. like for uh, portraits, um, you know, like a. A, a, a anything from 50 yeah. yeah anything from 50 yeah. onwards will make them mm -hmm. look better okay yeah. absolutely so that would be my my feedback on some of that is like maybe sh uh, shoot some of them with that type of uh lens uh lens as well and so what uh what 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 kind of questions does the uh the photographer have uh, for us question is uh do i have to change anything in the collection 
Um, yeah, I think this needs to come out. And I think Sabota is correct on, on number five. Yeah. I think if you yeah. took away those two, um, you know, uh, I like the shot of this kid too, but I mean. Uh, he could go so we, horizontal. Yeah. Yeah, but. I mean, a collection can have horizontal and vertical. I don't think that would break a collection. But yeah, that kid definitely deserves to be cropped horizontally. Because yeah. it's a good image. It will be the first one to sell. Mm-hmm. And so, um, other questions? Anything like price yeah. and stuff? Pr the price is good, so let's, you know. No, just... the other question is not so clear. Is it, uh, is it okay to write my experience while capturing? So, maybe he's talking of uh, telling a story of the picture or maybe he's talking about uh, the story he wrote in the description that he's still traveling and he's taking these pictures. He's using the present tense. I mean, I think it's okay. I mean... It... I mean, yeah, I mean, I think the first part should be like your artist statement or whatever. Then, like, maybe the second part should be about, like, what you're currently doing and traveling. And then, you know, get like your addition stuff stuff here. And then if people want to put, like, their, like, awards and stuff, maybe that comes last to me. So that would be, like, my order. Artist yeah. statement, I think, is always the most important. True, true. So cool. that's it. He has no question on pricing because pricing is good. He knows that. <laughs> Okay, great. And so we'll move on to um, Children's Moose. This is on a foundation collection. It's a collection of five. Uh, it's by um, uh, Marat uh, Ab Abran Oglu. Abran Oglu. So we'll take a look at some of these shots here. And so, so sorry, let's look at the description first. Children, innocent, beautiful, pure-hearted, children with expressions of hope, but sometimes anxiety in their eyes. In this collection, I photograph the state of children in various regions of uh, Anatolia. Anatolia is which is uh, something that just keeps coming up over and over. It's just um, the Turkish photographers, right? They're just, man, they are, uh, they're coming meta-jungle strong. So. I present to your uh, liking my photos, which I have carefully selected from many. I mean, probably would reword that. I don't think yeah. you need to say that. I don't think you need to say that. Um, uh, there's no activity, so no sales yet. Uh, so let's take a look through uh, some of the shots. So, so this one, Under the Bridge Boy. Uh, I, I, might have, I might have titled that in a different way. I might, I might have been, I might have did like a boy under the bridge. But I, think it's a, I think it's a beautiful shot. Right? Love the eyes, tell a story, you know. It looks like yeah. he's possibly living under the bridge, right? Look how dirty the um, his doll is. Her doll. Oh, I'm sorry, his doll. His doll. Yeah. Very, yeah, um, I mean, this is a perfect image because he's wearing red and the background is very cool. So it's a very beautiful compliment happening. And everything about this image is just perfect. You know, if I had to buy, I would buy it in a heartbeat. Yep, really beautiful shot. <clears throat> and so um, next shot... Um, titled uh, Deaf and Dumb. Um, I talked about this because in America, dumb, you know, is a, like a, a derogatory term for people that are, you know, stupid. And I don't think that that's what they meant here. Do you want to shine some light on that? Maybe you, maybe you understand what they meant by that. Because yeah, the, even... the description, a nationally award, hold on. The innocent, the innocent eyed boy impressed me a lot. However, I learned some sad news from his mother after, after the shooting. Um, I don't know if the shooting, the shooting, photography shooting? <laughs> yeah. Photography. Or after, like, well, <laughs> well, well, I mean, I, I mean, because he became deaf and mute. So, okay. Our child became deaf and mute. So maybe, you know, this dumb mean mute? Yeah, because see, what happens is in India also we use the word dumb uh, for people who can't hear. So that's commonly used terms. You know, even uh, previously you talked class eighth class which is again a word which is used in india as well we don't say you know like uh, grade we say class eighth grade okay. eighth class. yeah similarly here deaf and dumb is nothing so but deaf and mute yeah okay okay and uh yeah i think it's a beautiful shot i think it's i think there's a lot going on in the eyes and yeah I think, and, I, and i love how i love the red and purple and then i love how Leads into this uh, story of the child bacteria feeding the uh, feeding these goats, right? Yeah, it's I mean, I can't pick anything in this. I mean, it's just perfect to my eyes. Yeah, same, same. 
I think this was our favorite shot. Or yeah. well, we we have, we were, you know you brought up something really interesting on this. So you said you know you can clearly tell that they asked these uh, these two to, to pose right the shepherd's mm-hmm. son, and that that you said that they could have um, they could have had the dog looking in this direction and and minded this this shadow more right and so and I think that you know little things like that make a big difference sometimes right you want to talk on that. Yeah, I mean, when you have the opportunity to stage so beautifully, so why not go one step further and make it perfect? Uh, what I would have done here is the dog is completely off the grid, you know, like it should have been between these two guys. Next to the, the tree, the dog should be sitting or sleeping or no dog. Little little things matter when you're staging a shot. Yeah, that makes absolute sense to me. Um, and then um, this shot here, I really, I, I, I love the expression on this girl here, um, and I love her little exp- expression too. And the fact that you've created this depth, and there's even a kid at the end, and he's he's on his bike. Um, I don't know. I I feel like I could. I, I feel like I'd like to see the colors a, a little more punchy in the shot, though. Like, maybe the blues could be a little more punchy and the pink and stuff, because I feel like I feel like the other um, the other images are, are very punchy in their, in their colors. So I think, yeah, I on this image also, <clears throat> if I can add, uh, what, you know, it's anyway a stage shot, you know, everything is done according to his instructions. So the guy in the back, the guy in the cycle uh, watching from the far corner, he could have been simply riding the cycle because this part of the image, which is two-third of the image, is completely empty right now. So that would be filled up if the kid was riding his bicycle through. If he, and if even he was if over he was, here. If he yeah, was here, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. riding through. And if he suppose he used a little bit of slow shutter, he could give, an, give the slow shutter effect on that kid riding the bicycle. I mean, I'm just saying, the shot is already done. It's good, but that feels empty. That whole area feels empty. Great. Really, really, really good point. Appreciate that point. That's awesome. Um, and then the last shot, uh, we both agreed. I mean, I said, I, I said, you know, this doesn't seem like it fits for me. And I suppose that, you know, he, he, he felt the same way. It's just, um, and, you know, one, because it's black and white, but two, I don't know, this child's expression is, is um, I don't know, it's not making sense to me to the rest in this collection. And then what's going on in the background here it seems like a lot of cheer and joyfulness, and this this doesn't it just doesn't tie in to get me as as for uh, for a story. Do you want to like um, expand on that a little yeah. bit? Yeah, for me, as the title of the image goes, left out, it feels left out in the ima- in this collection, you know, because it doesn't fit in to this uh, collection at all. And we have seen this uh, power of staging, you know, all the images were staged and staged beautifully, but here somehow it doesn't look like the same photographer who can do that and of course black and white in between all those wonderful colorful colorful shots feels a bit left out as the title says only those four images would make a great set you didn't need this one at all and especially at a 0.75 ethereum price for that black and white it could be quite a task because it doesn't i mean it doesn't have that punch like the other images had which had a great story something to catch our eyes yeah sure great yeah Agree. Um, and so, did they have specific questions? Uh, yeah, let me just check uh, children's moods. Can you evaluate the number of photos in the collection and the pricing? Sure. <clears throat> yeah, we, we talked about the pricing. Um, yeah, yeah um, you know, I'll go back to saying this. Uh, if you've had previous successes at selling at a lower price, then I agree with the prices of 0.75 and 0.5. Um, if you haven't had any other successes in selling in previous, uh, then I think it could be asking a, lot, a little bit, right? Like it could be asking a lot. I mean, 0.75 is, I don't know, 20, 20 something hundred dollars. It has to be 20 something hundred dollars per image. Um, but you know, I, I'm, not, I'm not one here to value your work and tell you if you're worth I'm just going based on market sentiment and what um, what other people in the market tend to do. I, I'm I'm not up I'm not up to this price yet in my work. 
So I, I don't know. Uh, that's just my, you know, my take. So. Yeah. Let's and see. also I think when I, I think when you put it at 0.75 or point, even 0.5 or one Ethereum, I think that's when you should decide that I'm going to wait. You know, that's exactly what some of the collectors who came on our space said. You can price it whatever you want, but ready to be ready to wait. You know, you should have the patience, patience. when you price it you, high. Yeah. You're ready to have patience for that. Exactly. So, yeah. Cool. So the other question is, uh, I think we already covered that, which is uh, why it's not selling. Yeah. Yeah. I think we covered all that. So. Um, yeah, and I, I don't want to go back to talking about all the things you can do to become uh, marketable and build relationships and stuff because we've beat, beat so much of that in, in every uh, AMA and, and a lot in this one already. So we think we can move on into um, uh, portraits uh, faces of uh, India uh, by uh, Akshay uh, Naik. Uh, Naik. Naik, yes. Yeah, cool. So, um, so uh, as a travel and street photographer, I like to take long strides across India to capture emotions of her vivid culture. This is a collection of faces which uh, sing of beauty amidst simplicity and ethnicity. Uh, available as one on one editions, and I give some license information here. So um, I put this in order of oldest because I wanted to see it. And, you know, I, I'd probably pick one of these shots or two of them. Um, I, I really enjoy this shot for me. It's one of my favorite in the collection here. I really love this uh, samurai shot, that or the, um, uh, or this one too. I, I, I really, I really enjoy this one too. Really beautiful, uh, beautiful, beautiful framing, beautiful framing, how he's shooting right up into the edge of the frame too. Um, well, let's take a look. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of beautiful uh, shots in here. You see, I favorited some stuff, and um, it, it, the one thing I'll say, um, just from like first look over it, is uh, I don't know this 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 gentleman doesn't feel like he he fits into this just because it it's such a close up portrait. I mean, it, maybe 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 the same with this gentleman here. Um, I don't I don't know. For me, it's like either keep it like a little more environmental um or 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 head on portrait but it feels like it could this series could be a couple of collections and maybe not just uh just one collection also just having two black and whites within a full color series is a little uh is a little bit for me i got like i think you said you know the other day that you know this area suppose so like that that these should work in color also. And so, Absolutely, yeah. Because yeah. Uh, these are the Buddhist monks and they wear red color, which is maroon color. They look terrific in color. I mean, if it was a collection full of black and white, totally makes sense. But uh, when you have a collection which is majority, 90% color, these two could have easily gone through as colors because they will look good anyways. Sure. And so it feels like there's a, there's a couple of extras of the same scene. So like I pointed out this scene, yeah. um, this scene, Kind of feels a little bit like you know kind of too similar in a sense we talked about this image right and yeah. you know boat is very uh very intelligent when it comes to paying attention to the background and you know in the background we talk about you know hurts this image because it's it's like we said we could have pulled the subject uh further away or got and got closer and and melted this beautiful teal uh behind these flowers and he's just too low in the frame also, the eyes at this level in the frame, when the frame goes this high, is it's it's really hard to be engaging with it. So probably would have cropped off quite a bit of the top here. Probably would have cropped like a whole inch off of the uh, off of the top here for uh, for this image. And so totally uh, because these are not the people you just bump into on the streets. Because uh, I covered this uh, Aryan culture. So when you go there, or even if you meet them in the city, which is the lay, when they come for festivals, that's when they wear these things. You have full control, you know, like they're such a nice, uh, such wonderful people that if you talk to them, they will say, okay, where do you want me to come? Okay, in this corner, you control the light, control the background. They will cooperate 100%. So I'm sure, you know, a photographer could have worked on the background because such a beautiful girl, but the distraction in the background is literally 
taking her eyes off uh, the of the girl. Yeah. Now, when you talk about controlling the subject and the let's take a situation where you take the subject and you put them into a darker area like a tent, and then you have mm. some light coming in. What is your best advice on controlling that light? Is it metering, like spot metering to um, to the specific highlights that you want to land on the face and having the, the metering on the camera sort of choose something for you? Or is it, or is it all in manual exposure for you? How do you go about it? No, I, I'm, I'm not such a traditional photographer that I shoot manual. I hardly shoot manual, honestly speaking. I shoot me manual. Too, me too. Uh, me too. I, I never shoot manual. I never shoot it unless I'm like uh, shooting like a landscape or something that doesn't move exactly. because I don't have the time to go through different lighting situations and constantly be changing the dials on my camera when I can miss a beautiful moment. It is not worth it for me. So yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. We are we are on the same page. Absolutely the same reason why I don't shoot manual because I don't want uh, my camera to come between me and the moment which is happening in front of me. So I choose aperture priority. You know, I go to aperture priority. I choose my aperture. If I see a portrait, it's two point eight. If I see a street moment, it's f eight or f eleven. So that's the only decision I need to take. The rest of the things are taken care by camera. So I keep my ISO at four hundred or eight hundred depending on the scene. And you get away with anything. So I want that speed rather than that control on manual mode. So what yeah. I do is when I do these kind of portraits, I take them to a place. Okay, I put them in the right angle, get the light right. And then I do bracketing. You know, I take three shots. Uh, we all know bracketing. So I take three shots in the negatives. Like first one will be a neutral shot, like the one which camera thinks is right. Second oh, one like will be you, a minus. What HDR, what HDR does basically. Yeah, but I don't merge them. You know, I just take no, it you so don't that merge I get them. three lights. Oh. Yeah, I get three mm -hmm. options of lights. That's smart. So you get an underexposed, a, a regular exposed, and an overexposed, and then whatever afterwards uh, in in post processing is easier to work off of to get the uh, the, the mood you want. If that's what you use. Yeah, but not overexposed. I go underexposed, and the third image will be further and underexposed. So that I get all controls on the darker side of the image because that's what I want in my uh, portrait, the magic of light. So I go all underexposed. One is neutral, second one is underexposed, third one is severely underexposed. So I get three different lights within that ah. span of one second. Yeah. Yeah, there's no point of overexposing in that situation. Yeah. Great advice. Yeah. And so, you know, I, I always hear a lot of people tell photographers that are starting out, they say, you got to you got to start off and shoot full manual. You got to shoot full manual. And I'll be the one to say that I disagree with that and I always mm -hmm. when when I teach people, I like teaching them on an iPhone. Like I I don't want them worrying about all of that stuff. I want I want new photographers to um be able to figure out how they see life and how they want to I want them to focus on composition and lighting and be able to make compelling images that come from their gut. Because that type of stuff, you, you, you can't really teach that in school. Like you can't go on YouTube and really learn how to do that. You gotta just go, gotta go out and do that. So like when I train my friends how to take pictures, I train them in, in aperture priority or I train them with an iPhone where they don't have to make any of these, uh, the, these, these decisions. And I, I personally recommend that to all people that are interested in getting into photography. And, you know, a lot of people will disagree with me and that's fine. But I'd rather them learn how to make something compelling because it came from them and they were able to capture a moment rather than uh, have to make so many mistakes in trying to capture something by having to use the dials to the point where they get frustrated because they can learn all of that later on. So exactly. That's my, we are in, my take. We're in the same. We're in the same boat. We are thinking exactly the same. Even people who come on uh, my trips, I tell them you have five days, so don't waste your time understanding what to do. Rather than that, leave the camera aside. It'll do the do its work in opportunity. You focus on the moments and the compositions and the light and all the things that come. And once they do that, they'll never go back to manual again. They'll be aperture priority for life. Because and once you understand, the... <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're in a we once are in a. Yeah, we're in a rare we are in a rare group of people that believe huh. that, though, to be honest, is that 
a lot of people that I've heard, because I mean, I went to photography school, is that you have to learn on manual and you have to, so you can control all these things. Well, you could always yeah. learn that afterwards, right? Like now, you know, you, you add that to your arsenal after you already know how to, how to stop gut feelings and how, how to make things you feel beautiful and compelling. It's, you know, but anyway, let's go on. I mean, this, 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 <clears throat> yeah, I want to say about this collection uh, that uh, it has, as Mike was rightly pointing out, without knowing the Indian geography, he was pointing it out that there are pictures from Rajasthan, which is the red color turban, the headgears, uh, which uh, that one. These are all from Rajasthan. The other ones are from the Himalayas. So there is two different collections running parallelly into one. So it could have been a very, very attractive collection if it was called Himalayan experience or whatever and show all those Buddhist images which he already has in the collection. That would be much, much more uh, appealing. And this whole Rajasthan collection could have been separate one altogether because it's a collection of 22 images. Uh, it could have easily been a collection of 10 each. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I I agree. Rather than a twenty-two uh, image collection, I think I think this could be broken down into uh, into two different two different collections actually. Yeah, one more thing I want to add is uh, about his uh, Twitter. I went to his Twitter. I know him, so we follow each other. So in his Twitter, he's been posting these images in his media. Uh, if you can go to media, Mike down there, after tweet tweet and replies this media. Yeah. So if you go here, he's posting images every day, but he's I mean, about this particular collection, but he's not telling stories. You know, that's something which many are, aren't doing. You know, like you need to start telling stories about the collection. You have 22 images to tell stories about. If you run yeah. further down, like, yeah. Yeah, I mean, also, I don't I don't like that the link for OpenSea is the first thing. Because, like, I don't even see that. I, I, I This just looks like it, it's, a, it's a continuation of this. Like, I would have a story, and then I would write, you know, uh, uh, link to open C below, and I'd put like a pointing arrow down to it, something true, like that. True. You have to, you have, you have to be kind of strategical with your your social media skills sometimes in getting people to um yeah, but to be interested and engage with it and and, and understand what you're trying to show. Uh, but but yeah, I agree with you on 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 storytelling about that image and making people uh, become engaged and wanting to click the link, you know, because. This just looks like someone's posting a picture. I don't even see the link. I I have to really look to see the link, and I'm only doing that now because we're doing the AMA. But otherwise, I wouldn't have saw that link. I would have just seen this. And I'd be like, oh, they're posting a nice picture today, and 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 whatnot. <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll give them a retweet. Um, so, yeah, great point. <clears throat> you know, um, so, particular questions on the uh, on the series? Yeah, um, he has more portraits which he has not added in this collection. So he's asking if this collection gets sold out, should he add more portraits to the same collection or should he create a new collection? Uh, if this if this collection gets sold out, should he add more portraits to it? I mean, yeah. I think... To this I think, or a new collection? I, I mean, I think that's thinking really far in advance considering that, you know, like 80 no no 90 something percent of the collection hasn't sold yet i mean i'd focus more on that before i'd even get into that realm so that i mean i think there's i think you have too many images right now i think 22 is too many when there's when there's um just so many that can be similar or you know you know if i really sat down with this i i, I could you know i could pull some, some of these like i'd probably pick one between these two you know um i, I really enjoy I this, it, this one <laughs> i said I sat on it. I made a Himalayan collection out of this, and it could be easily a collection of nine beautiful images, top class. Yeah. Well, yeah, nine top class images is much better yeah. than 20, 22 images that have nine top class images that you have to search to find because it's saturated with other images that are not top class images. So, um, yeah, yeah great, great point. So. And you, you had a very good point yesterday, Mike, on this. If you go to the activity, you observe something very interesting, which is uh, more or less, which says that maybe the five photographer has given up. Yeah. Five months. Five months is in the last sale. Okay. And so you, what that tells me is like, you know, what, what ha, what's, what's going on in five months? Five months is a long time. I've only been in the space for five months. So I know that that's a really long time. And so, um, 
you know, you pointed out his Twitter, he's posting photos from it, but uh, take a step further, right? He said, or write a story about it, take a step further, go on Twitter spaces and talk about why this work is super important to you. Take a step further and take our advice in this, in this session and drop the collection down to some of the more masterful pieces. Um, you know, that's, you know, that's, that's my advice. You know, like it's, if it's, it's not selling, it's, it's, it has to do with, you know, sometimes you have to take, you have to change your approach. Like I'm always trying to change my approach with everything I do in the space, because I don't know that the next thing that I do is not going to be the best thing that I do for, um, for, for my next collection. So, um, I mean, if, for certain people that are doing something one way and they're selling out every time, sure, stick to that. But like, if it's not, you know, it's sometimes it's 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 time to try new things. Maybe it's it's eliminating some images, and or maybe it's um, switching up your uh, your tactics of how you're building relationships or um, your storytelling, or you know, maybe maybe showcase showcase other artists so that other artists want to showcase you. You know, there's a lot of a lot of stuff that goes into us. It's very it's very the very dimensional space, and there's a lot of lot of ways in which you can um, you can get your work out there and people interested in clicking on the links to see your work because five months and most of the images have zero favorites tells me that there's just no eyes on this project. So that's that's what I yeah. have to say. Yeah, I'm a I'm a space guy, as you guys know by now. <laughs> Even uh, it's funny, Sloika released a newsletter today about uh, what's going on in Sloika, and they wrote a thing about me, and they wrote space machine. You know, like that's how people are seeing me now, which is funny. Dude. But I never seen. I never seen Akshay even once in my space. Akshay, if you're listening, please come up. These are easy images to sell. I've seen images sell in my spaces, and these are the easy grabs because they're excellent. So spend more time on the spaces as well. It's important. Dude, I saw that you were in a space before this started. So <laughs> yeah. You're, yeah. So keep your you're grinding, and obviously you're selling out your collections, and so you're doing a lot for the community. So yeah, I mean, some people just you know take takes take that take some of that information and run with that um, if there's no other questions we can move on yeah there's no other question so we have two other we have two more uh, two two more photo series so this is uh anatolian uh, colors and um the artist is gulin um anatolian colors I, I i work in the finance sector uh i live in turkey i have been doing documentary photography for nine years i have had national and international successes Okay, so this is this is my point. Whereas, like, this information needs to come after this information because your the amount of time you've been a photographer and your successes are like less important than this part here. These clothes, uh, which belong to uh, the Aegean region of Turkey, can be found in almost every house. These clothes are made from various types of fabrics. They are fabric types uh, such as uh, bosa, alpaca, uh, uh, gabardine. In addition, there are many beaded accessories on the clothes and flower headdresses uh, on their heads. All, all girls and women wear these colorful outfits at weddings. The costumes of single girls are different from the costumes of married women. Let's look into the collection. So, and click on from that I favorited. So um, I favorited this shot here. Um, thought the expression was uh, really beautiful and genuine. The girl's gorgeous eyes, the light on the eyes is really great. Um, and you got you gotta love the um, you know the 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 fashion in these, right? Like it's it's beautiful. The only thing I would say is like um, I, I I do like this outside dark lighting. But I, th I think in some of these areas, you probably could like, um, you could spot treat some of these areas by like bringing up the exposure on some of these shiny pieces and, and, and these other colorful parts that could maybe pop more. I don't know if that would take away from the face or not, but what do you think, Sibota? Would it take away from that? Is this perfectly exposed? Yeah, I mean, your point is excellent. Uh, dodging and burning is something I emphasize as well. And I think it's almost there. The picture is almost ready. So one thing that bothers me is a little bit of crop is required on this picture because 
you need to make sure that you know when you do a portrait of this kind the nose like falls here. either in the no no not like that. just from the top if you just crop it little bit down i just want the nose to be the person to be more centered you know like right now the person is off centered it just takes a mm-hmm. 10% crop to make it happen and also one mm-hmm. more that she could try was could have tried was uh, straightening the eyes okay it has a feel when the eyes are slanted because they're not in the same plane you know it's going downwards it has a feminine feel but sometimes when you straighten the eyes make them in the same level both the eyes are in the same horizon then it becomes more appealing at times on certain portraits it depends i'll have to see it on lightroom and see how it works i'll talk to her maybe in dm about this picture but overall you know i made points for all the collections today i wrote it down in a paper but for this collection i wrote nothing because i know this collection so well and uh, i even pushed it to alpha and alpha happened to buy one of the images from this yeah, collection this mm-hmm. yeah he wrote a beautiful thing about it which even i didn't see when alpha by c analyzes this picture really beautifully so yeah i mean her collection is perfect mhm yeah it is a beautiful collection um and for but... me if i had to pick one third image is the image which really gets me like if yeah the third one if i sell out yeah maybe, i love the shot this, yeah i absolutely love this shot because these are the kind of things i do and i so connect to this image Yeah, it's good. the lighting is gorgeous and her expression is is fantastic, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I can't say not a single thing is wrong in this image. It's just perfect. No, and it's like this little hair that comes across. It almost exactly. kind of mimics <laughs> mimics it almost kind of mimics these like little branches back here too. Everything comes together really well here. Really nice. Really nice work. Um this uh this one here seems uh to me like um Oh, I'm just underexposed compared to the rest. I, 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 what do you, do you think this is correct? Um, do you do like the the idea that this is really underexposed, or um, what do you feel about this? Because I know you I mean, shoot a lot of this portraits. Yeah, I mean, when I shoot such people, we have a uh, Indian c- culture of this kind, similar kind. So when I shoot, I try to make this kind of pictures as well, where they're not looking into the camera; they're in their own moment. They're maybe dressing up or they're talking to each other. So that adds to the story. I think in this collection, this makes sense because she's trying to tell the bigger picture as to how they look, even when they're together, like two people at the same time, candid moment. I think it adds to the collection, in my opinion. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't think it's a bad photograph, and I think it adds to the collection too. I just thought that maybe it was like a little bit too dark for me. Or maybe it's a little bit too dark. A, yes, just a personal preference. I think it's a little too dark. Yeah, um, compared to the other one, it's very it's, it's yeah, just when, very dark. When you see it in a thumbnail, yes, it looks very dark. But once you open and expand, I think it kind of falls together. Mm-hmm. This is a beautiful image as well. Um, I the thing I do notice about this image though is that is the red in the cheeks and the red in mm-hmm. the cheeks. back here and you know I'm I'm not sure if you know maybe um there can be some uh some adjustments done to make the skin feel um just a little bit more uh pleasant or appealing or um I don't I don't know if that's a saturation issue or or what not but you know that no, maybe I'm I mean, just being too too picky I don't know No no I mean what happens with uh, such people even in India those people oh, who stay in the weather the it's weather it's a yeah, dryness the dryness right it's a dryness okay it's i'm i i forgot somebody mentioned that the other day so thanks for bringing that up um the the um the, the descriptions look great artist edition collection name location bio license great to go killer killer we love that yeah we love that she's been she's I mean, been grinding so yeah good good she's been working we, hard we, yeah Yeah, and they're really beautiful. And so, what was the questions that the photographer had before we move on to the last collection? Yeah, the first question is: Is the number of images in the collection sufficient? Six, or should she add add more images to the collection? Is the first question? No, six is good. I, mean, I think six is fine, unless the the other images I add are also really great. I wouldn't add them just to have like ten or something. Uh, yeah. I don't mind collection of six. That's yeah. yeah. Have it at six and get it sold out and get the tag rather than wait forever with 
Yeah, maybe right. Twenty images. Get, yeah. Get that. Get that. You know, I have. I have a sold out collection. You know, little stamp of approval or whatever you want to call it. You know, recognition from the community. Right. It's a nice yeah. thing to have. Yeah. Yeah, I think the second question is answered, which is whether it's cohesive. I think it is. <laughs> and the third one is, I'm curious about your opinions and suggestions about my photos. I think even that is over. Yeah, we'll talk about that. Great, great, great group. Uh, hopefully, we've got some eyes on today. And, um, you know, hopefully the people in the, um, in the audience that are listening, you know, um, retweet some of, uh, some of your favorite work here, you know. Show love to the people that are up here taking feedback. It's not easy, and it's not, it'd be a nice thing for us to uh, to do that. Now, this last one I picked by accident. Okay, I picked a lot of this stuff last night. I was tired, and um, um, hmm. so Sabod so sent me um, this last collection uh, 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 from Gulen, Gulen right, um, to to add and. Um, but there was an underline under the name for this collection. So I, I, I thought it was this one. I added it by accident. This is actually under the category for street photography. But since I said that we were gonna cover them, we'll cover them anyway. But this is, this is under street photography. So photos in this collection were taken uh, in a few uh, Anatolian streets. Uh, you can feel the sound, movement, and color of the streets in the photos. You can hear the conversations in front of the door. The sounds of the children on bikes going fast. Even if you don't like car noise and the smell of exhaust, this is a part of life now. Uh, if the heart of a city is the square of the city, the streets are its veins. I like that. I love that last sentence. Beautiful. Yeah. Right? Great line. Great. Great, yeah. great artist statement that's really short, but doesn't give away too much. I, yeah, props on that. Let's look at the activity. Um, two months ago, had a sale. Oh no, or list listed that? No, they sold that. Okay, okay. So um, just gonna go off like first impressions here. Um, uh, doesn't doesn't feel cohesive. Okay, that's my first impression. My second impression is there's some great images here. Okay, um, so um, this one was posted in my 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 thread the other day that uh, that uh, color theme thread on purple and pink and. Everyone really, Beautiful. everyone yeah. loved it so much. Yeah. Um, I think it was one of the winners of the thread, even though you know we weren't handing out any gifts or anything like that. So people, oh, this one wins or whatever. But yeah, I think this is just incredibly well seen. Like even if the image didn't have the guy and it was just this part, it would still be an incredibly well seen abstract image. And just with the guy, it's just even better. It's like he becomes another. It becomes another window. Like he's like the next chick, chick window. Boom! This like hmm. be beautiful way to shoot abstract with uh, street in one image. Okay. Per, uh, oops. Amazing. Didn't, didn't mean to do that. <laughs> um, amazing shot, right? Um, but you know, then you look at it next to a shot like this. And this is. Also, an amazing shot to me. I, I think it's beautiful. The lighting is gorgeous. Their expression is wonderful. The the depth is 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 so good. Of the like showing depth of like the door going in this way. We live in a three dimensional world of photography. I think it's a really great idea to learn how to show depth, and it's really well done in this image. But it just doesn't make any sense next to this image. It's just not. It's not the same collection to me. Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't fit the collection. Like maybe this fits with this uh, shot and the next shot and then the shot after that, right? One, two, three, four. Um, but, you know, there's stuff in here that feels a bit out of place. Um, this is a nice shot. Interesting. Um, I love it. Yeah, right. Beautiful. With the hand, with the main focus on the, uh, on, on the, on the aged hand and, the rope just goes out and fills the right side of the frame. So I would love to talk about how we don't like to keep these uh, these frames empty and, and fill them with a, another story. And just yeah, you want to talk about it? Yeah, I mean overall his collection is so beautiful, but the problem is they're not matching each other. You know, like he came into portraits by mistake, but I think he's in the right place because he has wonderful portraits. You know, the third image. 
and the seventh image is such strong portraits even the first image you could call it a portrait because it's staged mm -hmm. uh, the so, problem is so the uh, title itself you know he calls it he calls it street noise and these are not street images you know it's not a street photography as such yes one or two of them are but most of them are more or less uh, staged images so it's a yeah. mix, mixed bag you know that's what i feel images are fantastic but it's a mixed bag. And, and so and like this image fits the least out of any of the images in this collection because like this is a, a while while image. it's a, what's that it's an incredible what? image yeah oh i thought you said terrible i was going to say i think it's i think it's great okay you said you said um incredible yeah, so good. Yeah. Such a good, such a good image. Beautiful. Like, look at this. Every single person looks joyful. All their legs are, are spread out. Right. It just, it just, I don't know. It just, everything came into place. Right. Beautiful image. But in this collection, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't understand how that can fit with this in any, any possible way. And so I'm glad we covered this collection too, even though it wasn't supposed to be covered. Um, and I mean, know, Mike, if you look at this, if I if you look at this collection right now, the the last image which you opened, the one which is sold, uh, the girls in the swing, yeah, that one, and the first image which you showed, the one which came in your thread, the colorful image, they're all belonging to one category, which is the patterns and use of minimalism and all that. Then sure. there's three portraits, which are excellent portraits. Then there are three yep. two street images. So that's what is the problem. It's all mixed up. <laughs> Yeah, it's just all mixed up. So, um, you know, only one image sold. So I, what I would do is I would burn all of the images except purple wall, this image, and then add, start adding to this collection of minimalism and abstract. Yeah. I'm sure this photographer has more of this because he could do this so well and he could do, or he or she can do that so well. And so it's like, um, I'm sure they have a lot more. So make your collection about that and don't call it street noise. Call it like, you know, um, I don't know, geometry in motion or something. I, I don't know, make up yeah. name. But like uh, some, something more along the lines of like uh, minimalism and, and geometry. And then use these beautiful portraits to like make, make your next collection after you, after you sell out your, your geometry collection. But that's like, I, you know, that's the advice that I have. Uh, if they have questions, they can go ahead and answer those. Yeah, let me just have a look at the questions. I was just out smoking. <laughs> so sure. the question is, uh, uh, can you hear the, oh, it's a very, I think grammatical error. Maybe can you hear the view of the street in noise photos? Can you hear the view of the street in noise photos? Can, I didn't get like, the question. Uh, I, is, is he trying to say, can we, can we hear the sounds of the street? just by looking at the photographs because that, if, maybe that is the question maybe that is the question yeah um, maybe that was the question um not specifically for me no. <clears throat> yeah there's no there's no real noise in this thing i can hear the girls clean as they fly through the swing but other than that i don't hear any other noise yeah okay and the other question is, which is the best street shot? Which is the worst street shot in this collection? Um, so you said there was just a few street shots, right? So like this first shot would be a street shot. That's a portrait. Um, this would be considered east. Would, would you consider this a portrait or a street shot? Portrait, a, a that street is shot? definitely definitely a street shot. Yeah, that one. Yeah, so street shot, street shot, and then this blue one is a street shot, right? No, that's um, no staged. Even the first one is staged. The this one is staged. Once the, the moment you interact with the moment, the street is gone the, from that moment. Yeah, mm -hmm. it becomes staged. Oh, yeah. oh this one's staged. Uh, yeah, clearly staged. Okay. I mean, yeah, you, so you that... it's not. It's it's very much visible. You know, the fourth wall is broken. Uh, I mean, the fourth image is where it looks very candid. Maybe he just sneaked in into that guy holding that donkey, and he got happened to snap it off, and that looks more street to me. The fourth well, one. Yeah. Considering that he's calling all, uh, well, he or she is calling all of this street, I don't know. I'll just tell you what my favorite images are. Uh, the purple wall, um, uh, uh, this image here, uh, sincerity, even though it's not the same genre, um, too tired, like this yeah. one. Um, 
I guess I would say, you know, this portrait here and, and probably this, this, uh, this rotating swing. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, those would be my favorites. And, and so, you know, and, and they're not, those and, are not Wall Street. <laughs> so. And Mike, you check the title again, Too Tired. Uh, he didn't use the word two. He used two, number two, which is so yeah, cool. It's clever. It's, it's clever because there's, yeah. there's two of them. Yeah, yeah, it's clever. I saw that. Well, it's two of them. So. Great. Is it, uh, and there was other question. And that's it. Okay, great. Well, I mean, I think that concludes like the, uh, the AMA. I mean, I think we, um, we hit a lot of points on a lot of things. And, uh, if, if you were, uh, an applicant and you didn't make it into this, then, you know, I'm, I'm sure that, uh, you can take, you can watch the recording on this and absolutely be able to take, uh, some of the information that myself and, uh, Sabod um, took our time to uh, really uh, try to give um, a lot of our own experience uh, through creating collections, through you know decades of, uh, of photography, to uh, try to try to help um, a lot a lot of you guys through portraiture. And um, I, I, I think I've learned something today. I'm sure Sabod's learned something today. The audience members have learned something today. So you know, just because your collection wasn't chosen, you know. There's, we're going to have more portrait ones in the future. Um, just want to thank Meta Jungle, <clears throat> Meta Jungle always for <clears throat> allowing us to have this platform to be able to do this, and now bringing in new community members. Like uh, last week, um, we had uh, I, I worked with um, I had, uh, Sammy, uh, Sammy, and this week I get to work with uh, Sabot. And so uh, it seems like Meta Jungle is sort of turning into this uh, educational space where um, people are trying, people are figuring out what their uh, what their voice is and what their what their their talent and what they're really good at. You know, we're all we're all individual and we're all unique one on one. So <laughs> if we can figure out what we know that the world uh, doesn't know, uh, then we should be able to share that with each other, and and, and that's going to help build uh, this ecosystem, which. Um, which you know, Meta Jungle is um, helping clearly create within the Web3 space. So uh, I had an awesome time today. Thank you so much, Sabod, uh, for being here. Your input is is uh, really, really valued, uh, not just by me, but uh, within the community. Thank you so much, Mike, for having me. I mean, as you said, uh, we learn. Uh, that's the fun of this whole uh, session. You know, we also learn at the same time. I'll, I learn hearing from you. I learn hearing from others work. So there's a lot of learning which happens and uh, that's the beauty, you know, since the day I've come to NFTs, I've been only celebrating photography every single day for the last two months and that never happened in any, any other platforms before. So I'm really glad and always happy to be part of uh, Meta Jungle. We are all the birds who chirp together and make this jungle beautiful. Yeah, it feels great. It feels great to be involved in art every day. And it's not something that uh, I've been fully immersed in at the, to this level until I found this space, um, and until I found Meta Jungle and all of you guys. So uh, life is good. And um, if anyone has anything else to say, other other otherwise, then we'll you know, then we'll, we'll wind up ending you know, the session if not. Well, and I just wanted to second that too, and thank thank you both, Mike and Sabo. This is like. Each session is unique and um, but wonderful. So thank you both for all the input that you gave. Um, and this is a great opportunity to get a chance to, you know, talking about art and critiquing and collections and being creative is such a great experience. And so I appreciate everything that you guys bring in. We're so happy to have you contributing to the Meta Jungle community. So thank you for the artists that submitted today. Thank you, of course, to both of you for everything that you've contributed. And this will be something helpful for so many to be able to learn from. So really appreciate it today. Awesome. We had a great time. So cool. Thank you guys.